Oh, oh, D&D time. Welcome, everybody, <laughs> to another episode of Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Whack. Uh -oh. Guys, it's time for some D&D. Oh, 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 yeah. And we're going to be playing it today. <laughs> we're very excited to be back. We've got an epic, exciting, super cool episode in our big campaign, the Erois campaign. We've been doing this three years. They're level 15. Oh, boy, it's getting spicy up in here. I'm your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes. Welcome. Uh, it's good to see you. We hope you're well. I'm joined by these lovely people, my good friends. They're here every week, and I adore them. Da -da -da -da. Wow. There we go. We have Rhiannon, we have Tom, we have Katie, hello. we have Trot, and we have Kim. Uh, hello, my friends. Oh, yeah. I hope you are all... Yo. I hope everyone is... I know you're well, because we've been talking for like an hour before we went live, but for the audience... Yeah. You're well, yes? I am well. Yes, Mark is my friend well. who checks if we are okay. Affirmative. Confirm. Yes, affirmative. Affirmative, we are well. Lord, yep. Master. And yes, and Yeah, excellent. Blink, blink. You're not being held blink, hostage. Blink. You're not, you know, don't blink no. uh, or anything I'm like that. I'm not being Good. held hostage. Good. No, <laughs> somebody else is. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to High Rollers. You might think that there's some weird deja vu going on, but no, it's not. This is the first intro we've done for this episode. Welcome to High Rollers D&D, a very e epic and exciting Dungeons & Dragons campaign. I'm your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes, and we're going to play some D&D today. I hope you're all excited. I know somebody is. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> Here's all the lovely people that are going to be playing today. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> We've got <laughs> Rhiannon, Tom, Katie, <laughs> Trot, and Kim. Now, we've been talking for an hour, uh, oh. so I know you're all okay, but tell the audience that you're all okay. You're all okay. okay. We are okay. Yeah. Great. Affirmative, okay. we are okay. Mark yeah, okay. is a good friend Perfect. who checks yeah. in with us and makes sure we're okay. He is the best friend. Nobody's being I'm held not. hostage, right? The right, Tom? I'm not being held hostage. <laughs> No, but somebody is. Anyway, we're going to talk about our two excellent sponsors for today's episode, NordVPN and D&D Beyond. Chris Trot, shall I go first or do you want to go first? You. All right, I'm just going to be... Right, serious moment for a second. Uh, I didn't prepare anything super funny. I was just going to do like a really heartfelt, serious thing for D&D Beyond. We've been using D&D Beyond for three years now. I honestly can't imagine running D&D and playing D&D without D&D Beyond now. Not only do you get an incredible character builder that has all of your character details, it makes it super duper easy to create D&D characters. One of the hardest things when you're introducing people to the game is explaining some of the weird character creation quirks of the D&D system. D&D Beyond makes that super duper mega easy. Uh, it's, it's so easy to just make a new character and start playing immediately. As a DM, though the biggest thing for me is having all of the digital tools for running combat looking up monsters looking up spells you know having that archive of amazing DD materials for you to buy i see what you're doing chris trot oh, 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 oh yeah <laughs> DD beyond's an amazing sponsor they've sponsored us throughout the, all of the eroes campaign uh please do and check it out there is a link in chat that you can go and check out and if you use that link if you use that link to go and check out D&D Beyond, it does support us as well, so please go and use it. D&D Beyond, thank you so much for your sponsorship. Uh, it's an amazing tool. I can only speak great things about it. Uh, the combat tracker is literally the best thing that's ever happened to me in all my years of running D&D. It's a great tool. Uh, so go and use that. Uh, that's it for D&D Beyond. Uh, we'll just say another quick word to them uh, in the middle and end of the episode just to say thank you, D&D Beyond. Please do go and check out that link um, and go check out all their streams and say Hi Rollers sent you. Uh, Chris Trot, tell us about NordVPN. Hi, it's me. I am Chris Trot. <laughs> and it's really me to give a NordVPN sponsor. You trust me. I am Trot. <laughs> Great deal. All you have to do, simple. Put your credit card details in the box. Send it to me. Stop. Stop. Can you hear me? Don't listen. Don't listen to... Sorry for interference. It was weird. Back to deal. You trust type with your human fingers. Your credit card details. All details. In the box. Put them all in. Don't listen to them. It's not really me. I'm over here. I've had to escape to the last place I know that has full NordVPN protection. 
my phone. Damn, I must have left NordVPN turned off on my PC for just a second before the hacker got in. I need one of you, someone I know who's fully protected by NordVPN to come and rescue me. Who can I trust? Tom. Tom, huh? it's you. What? Tom. Oh, me? Oh, sorry. I was just taking the time during this segment to uh, fully enjoy the internet without restriction thanks to NordVPN. I know. Thanks to the High Rollers code HRDND you recently used to get the huge discount on a two-year plan and that bonus month free. Don't forget that you got that. No doubt you're loving the extra protection and freedom to explore the web as you see fit, Tom. Oh, yeah. I'm not just fully protected. I've also got the browser extension, which makes my surfing totally safe and fast. But leaving my PC untouched so I can carry on gaming, gamers. That really is phenomenal. Uh, no doubt <laughs> uh -huh. you're already enjoying the app for your mobile device as well to keep that protected. But that's besides the point, Tom. I need your uh, help right now. Why? What do you mean? Are you trapped in a phone and someone has taken over your PC? I'm just trying to understand the plot here. Well, you're a fully protected person on NordVPN, and I need you to remotely access my PC to re-enable NordVPN. Can you do that for me? I can I can do that. I'm way ahead of you. I've already secured an encryption tunnel to a bandwidth. A bandwagon, I mean. I read the script wrong. Off a Russian satellite. But time is short. It's about to orbit overhead in five seconds. Well, you better get outside, Tom. Oh, I'm Many going. apologies <laughs> for that. Not sure what that is. You want special discount code? Well, give me your personal health records. Uh, don't worry, Trot. Uh, <laughs> I'll save you. Oh my god. <laughs> Guys, now we have it. formed a bond, <laughs> and you like me as person, I also will need your entire nudes. Sent to me now. Wait, what is that? Yes, Tom, it worked. The coast is clear. We're now fully protected. Wait a minute. I know. If I establish a connection between your PC, the Russian satellite, and your phone, I can get you back. Connection established. Transfer now. It's working. back. Tom, we did it! Thanks to NordVPN! Oh, any final words, Tom? Oh, oh, I'm back. Uh, yeah, if it wasn't for me being fully protected by NordVPN in this sweet two-year plan, thanks to the code HRDND, &D, who knows what that hacker could have revealed to everybody online from your PC. Oh boy. Uh, anyway, you can check out the link with nordvpn.com slash HRDND to get the amazing deal now! What a hero! Did it! What did a it. hero! Bravo! That was oh, spectacular Bravo. production value. Oh I my gosh! I genuinely think the Nord VPN verse that's being created <laughs> through these sponsor deals with many, many creators out there is genuinely the most epic cinematic universe that can be created. <laughs> like it, 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 this hacker verse that's being conjured uh, is truly it was impressive. Was a convoluted storyline. Was it? I, I no. Was was it though? I think it was basically the plot of the movie. Tron, I did a lot right? of science <laughs> research, so yeah. I think I know what I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah. I I really liked the hacker's um, hacker suit, like the, the little spike. Yeah, the hacker like, jacket. That was really yeah. cute. Nice. Well, that was the AI, yeah, the yeah. evil AI. I'm evil glad you... Trot, we can call them now. I hope you evil like the enemy. Trot, I hope evil Trot never comes back. Boy, howdy. Ooh. Evil AI mm. Trot. Man. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. He's good. You have gone Lord for VPN good. Enabled. <laughs> Wink. I just like the fact that Tom had to ask Tash if she would record him just like... <laughs> That just happened just now. Yeah, that was live, Katie. Oh, of course. I don't know what you're talking about. But I mean, Tash had to take the camera down, right? Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to see that. Otherwise, we can see that. Or was it Bolero? Was it Bolero? Was it Bolero? Could have been. Anyway. Sweet house, Trot, by the way. Sweet house. Hello. If only NordVPN could protect us now. Uh, I think we're having slight technical issues. We're going to try one more time. PC um, struggling. 
PC is struggling. There might be some issues going on. But we're going to see how far we can get. If we go down again, we're going to try like a full restart and we'll we'll give it another go. But just keep in I'm mind there might be issues. I'm not being held against my will. Thank <laughs> oh, we're not, we're not uh, doing the entire script again? No. Mods and chat, if you can let people know to refresh uh, and just let them know that we are now back live uh, and let folks know that they can tune in. Um, the only other thing, I want to get onto the game. So the only quick thing I was going to mention is that Rhiannon has done a brand new recap that's available on the YouTube channel. Uh, the recaps are a fantastic way to get people into watching High Rollers and caught up on the story. This one took Rhiannon like three hours to film and she has to watch all of the episodes. She puts a ton of work into them. So please go and give them a watch. They're very funny. Eleven episodes. Um, sick of seeing us. Chapter. Sick of us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was a chonker. There was a lot going on there. Big, big a, boy. So oh, lots of deets. Big yeah. chongus. Uh, so yeah. go and give that a watch. Uh, spread the word. Tell people about it. It's a great way to get them into and caught up on the story of Aroes. Um, episode 11 takes you up to some of the big... Uh, the, the, the late re recap takes you to some of the big stuff that happened when the first the party first got transported to Mir's gear. Very big epic stuff going on. Uh, mm. So go and check that out. <laughs> Everyone's just like... Every noise is like... Oh, <laughs> what is it? Was what that your PC trot? Yes. Oh, oh, that's oh. The noise making. this oh, is that's... me oh. unmuting my mic. What the hell? Oh shit! It's like a, it's, it's a UFO in your PC. It's what it sounds like. Yeah, <laughs> there's a whole ass UFO in there. <laughs> did I go too shit. far with NordVPN? <laughs> yeah, I think maybe you did. <laughs> do, 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 do. do we want to just like call a restart now and just say we're going to be back in five minutes? We're just going to do a full restart and see if that helps, or do you want to just keep going with that noise? Uh, well. <laughs> It's a good question to ask. <laughs> it's spitting flames right now. So. I think it's more likely to be like a hardware issue rather yeah. than a software issue. So, <laughs> oh my god! If it's, that noise. Yeah, probably fine. Let's go. Probably Hopefully. fine. Let's just keep going. Yeah, All right. Let's see how far uh, we get. Well, let's play Dun Duns and fingers crossed the PC can handle it. Mm. Um, <laughs> see you on the other side. Welcome back to Aroes. The storm chasers rushed to the sky city of Gusthaven after hearing of an attack during their meeting with the representatives of Aroes. On arriving, they found Zarkira, a deadly and cunning sorceress and commander of the Valkyrian Empire, had unleashed a number of powerful dragon-like constructs as well as strange hybrid humanoids onto the city. The Storm Chasers and their allies split up, with the party heading to the airship docks to rescue their crew and Captain Thalia Whisperwind and her astral ship, the Twin Star Longbow. The battle seemed to be going far better than expected, with the dragons and hybrids proving no match for the party. However, in a flash of magic, a far more powerful opponent appeared, Zarkira herself, along with a large spider-like construct. Setting the spider on Quill, Zarkira then attacked the party with powerful spells and kept the melee fighters disabled. As the battle raged on, Azaria Perel, a powerful mage and enchantress of Gusthaven, appeared to take sides with Zarkira. However, she quickly revealed this only to be a ploy to buy time while she studied Zarkira's defenses, and revealed that this Zarkira was only a copy, a simulacrum. With combined effort of the party, the simulacrum was defeated. However, in the chaos of this battle, Quill was knocked from the sky by the spider construct, a created creature called a Retriever. And before the party could rescue him, the Retriever grabbed Quill and transported him away to some unknown location. 
Without time to chase, having to rush to the aid of Gusthaven and their allies, the party must now figure out where Quill has been taken, whilst Quill finds himself trapped in the real Zarkira's clutches. Dun, dun, dun. And that, my friends, oh. is oh. where we begin today. As it will, the storm chase is still in Gusthaven. Um, the ending of the battle, you guys kind of finished your battle at the docks and the, the storm chaser itself got up into the air along with the twin star to kind of provide air support to the city. But it still takes you a bit of time to kind of finish off the forces there and ensure that all of your allies, um, Moonstar, the drag, you know, the Prince Sky Prince and all of the citizens are safe. In that time, we see Quill. Quill, when you first arrived, uh, you found yourself in some sort of anti-magic chamber. Uh, you know that you don't, you know, none of your abilities, uh, your spells, um, you became aware that there was this absence of magic, even your equipment and things like that. And you noticed that there was this kind of two-way windowed glass where some sort of conversation with Zarkira happened. Uh, as they kind of turned away and continued having a conversation, you do see a little bit more. Um, you can read Zarkira's lips, and she says something along the lines of, take his possessions, use the dimensional shackles to prevent escape, and take him to one of the regular cells for now. I must prepare new spells and rituals to fully examine him and begin the process. Make sure one of the Illithids gets as much intel out of him before I begin. His mind may break under the stress of the experiments. Oh, crap. Uh, uh, you see her gesture, and you see two heavily armed, uh, like, full plate wearing guards make their way towards the door to come in. Is there anything you want to try and do now um, before these guys step inside? I mean, if there's anti-magic, like, <laughs> not a huge amount I can do, even... I mean, you're like... aware that there is an absence of magic in this room. Like, even your magic items, you don't feel the connection to them. There's almost always this kind of, like, subtle presence of, of you know, magic around you because you have all these magical artifacts and spellcasting and things like that. None of that seems to be functional. Uh, God, yeah, and even, like, Sphere of Oracles and all of my magic stuff, that's uh, useless now as well. Uh, I mean, the spear the spear is you don't know i mean like all of your normal mundane items definitely don't have magic but the spear is pretty powerful maybe it's more powerful than this chamber you don't know if you would like to try by all means uh i mean there's not much i can do with it uh really okay. i kind of just want to keep it on me if i can but they're gonna come in and take all my shit anyway right so, yeah, and as you're kind of contemplating this, the doors, uh, this kind of uh, metallic door kind of slides up into the ceiling and these two pretty strong looking guards wearing full plate, you can't tell who they are, what races or genders they are. They kind of come in. Uh, one of them just, they have weapons. One of them has like a big heavy looking two-handed sword at the ready. The other one uh, would probably have some sort of like effect. All right. Remove everything you have. Everything. You can keep your clothes. Oh, that's nice. Um, okay, I mean... So they and they will step in to start, like, taking stuff off of you as well. Like, they take the spear out of your hands. They will begin sort of, like, you know, pulling your satchel bag, things like that. Anything you have. Now, certain things, we will say a couple of things. Things like your Leoman's tiny chest. The replica is just the item you... The focus you use to summon the real chest. The real chest is hidden on the ethereal plane. They can't get access yep. to that unless they know okay. the spell and they yeah, can just break the your code whatever. tiny chest, so that's okay. It's a tiny chest. They won't take your mechanical wing because to them, they're just like, well, he can't do anything with that anyway. They're not going to, you know, strip off Nova's like gear and stuff like that for you. They're basically taking anything that they think is a magic item, any weapons and any armor you have on you, as well as like anything that could be used to escape. So like any like mundane equipment. Um, uh, obviously oh God, don't my... delete it, but... My wyvern armor, no. Have, yep, wyvern armor goes, uh, weapon goes, any potions, any like lock picks or anything like that, they will basically take off of you. My wand of magic missiles, no. My thunderstone pistol, no. Yep. 
Uh, holy oh, symbol. Right. If you have like any kind of holy symbol that you would channel your clerical spells through, they take that. You know, they they know that you are some sort of like spellcaster. They're looking for amulets and focuses and things like that. Uh, and then the last thing they do is the one with the sword steps up behind, uh, steps up to you and connects something around your neck and to both wings. Uh, it's kind of like a collar with chains that go down to uh, wristlets. Um, he connects okay. it to you. Uh, and as they step back, uh, they be, like they kind of like check it. They nod. Uh, All right, the shackles are attached, Mistress. And you see Zarkira through the window just nod, um, and she kind of looks at them, looks at the thing, and there is this moment where you feel the room change. You feel like something in the room change, like something has been switched off. But then they speak a word. Uh, you know, some, you know, arcane phrase, uh, basically like draconic for activate, and the collar and the two wristlets seem to glow. They become alive with magic. Um, and yeah, right. you're like, <clears throat> you kind of tense against them. They aren't prohibiting you from like moving, like you can use your arms fairly normally. You wouldn't be able to fly with this thing attached because it's kind of like a big collar around your neck and then these chains attached to your wrist. So you can still use your hands to like eat and, you know, do things. You couldn't fly with this thing on. Um, but yeah, there is okay. some sort of other other magical effect here that you're unaware of. But it does seem that the anti-magic has been turned off. Okay. So so what's the magic in the thing then? In the shackles? You don't know. Uh, okay. They will begin to march you out of this chamber. Um, uh, they basically kind of shove you and push you. Uh, not like super aggressively or violently, but they're like, alright, time to move. And they kind of give you a nudge and will uh, armed escort you. I mean, yeah, I'll follow for now. I just want to figure okay. out more stuff first. Also, I'm sure. going to a regular cell. That sounds nice. Yes. So they lead you through a number of kind of twisting corridors down through a... You saw this in uh, Shadow Song Pinnacle, like a magical elevator. Uh, they kind of take you into it and like the shifting crystal almost seems to undulate and warp so that the, the whole thing goes down. Um, and they lead you out into another series of corridors. And you've seen ships like this before. You've been on astral ships like this, kind of black crystalline walls, metal flooring, dull purple and red lights that just kind of give like a very low ambient light throughout the whole place. Um, you Very similar to the one that you found at the bottom of the lake and, and other, you know, vessels that you've been on in a similar nature. Uh, and they lead you to a, a cell. Uh, it has a similar kind of field of force um, rather than a door completely transparent they touch something on the side it deactivates they put you in they touch it it reactivates uh and then they leave you and then they just abandon you and to give you an idea of what this kind of looks like uh here you go it looks like a cell <laughs> yep <laughs> so, uh, yep you can just about see that there is a kind of corridor maybe some stairs leading up um another couple of doors uh and then you know a short while later, uh, the guards leave. One of them seems to head out a kind of pair of double doors, and a pair of Durgar seem to come in, but they stay far away from the cell, and they appear to be working on some sort of crystalline consoles in the far corner, just kind of muttering to each other um, as they enter it. Uh, this is now I where saw... I hand it over to you, where if there's anything you want to do, any questions, this is where you are. Yeah, I don't, I don't suppose I saw any, like, oh, we're, a, we're aboard this ship like insignia or something no every single trooper like if you pass like other soldiers they all wear zarkira's emblem they're not wearing the normal valkyrian uh, emblem they are all very much uh, zarkira's forces you don't see any troopers with callus's emblems on them um you definitely spy a mixture of creatures uh because it's quite busy this ship there's there's a lot of things here you bypass a number of mind flayers um they seem to have uh large hulking creatures you know gray skin kind of dragging their arms along behind them or or minotaurs but they all seem to be in a state of mind control they don't they just kind of blindly following orders their eyes glazed over just doing whatever you know, invisible commands they're being given. You do see more of these kind of black clad, you know, these black armored stormtroopers almost in their full plate armor, uh, carrying Valkyrian weapons kind of stomping around. Um, you do see other Durgar as well. They seem to be the like labor force here. Uh, they're engineers and they're doing repairs or carrying equipment and things like that. They don't seem particularly pleased with the, the state of things on this ship. Um, 
And perhaps more what the most worrying thing that you come across is a number of these very powerful looking serpentine humanoids. Um, you've encountered Naga before when they attacked the Dragonborn. These ones look far more I mean powerful to say the least. They have like serpentine bodies, serpentine heads, but these kind of humanoid arms dressed in very noble looking fine regalia. Some of them almost look like scientists or researchers. Um and they are very much the cream of the crop. Like everybody else is taking orders from them when you bypass them. Um, okay. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I'm on 30 HP, and I don't know what these shackles do. So I'm going to test aura of vitality. Uh, so I can just heal myself back up, I guess. Does that have a material component? Just verbal just verbal okay uh you can cast the spell so you cast the spell successfully um yep okay uh what's the immediate effect so i just heal 2d6 um basically every turn okay you get 10 turns of that so if we average 2d6 is 7 uh you'll get 70 hit points back um after a minute one of those guards comes back uh, and slams a button on the side of the cell, and you feel this intense, like, lightning and force power reverberate through you. You take 35 points of force damage. Um, <laughs> and he basically says through the thing, Don't try that again. We know when you're spellcasting. Do it again, I'll crank the power up. I'm trying to keep myself healthy. It's like Akira. We don't need you healthy. We just need you alive. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to stay alive. Ow. Thank you, though. Don't let me catch you spellcasting again. And then he leaves. Bastard. <laughs> uh, hmm. After a minute, you, though. With your perception, you do see the Durgar who are working in the corner. There's a man and a woman, both like bright red, almost like glowing ember hair, uh, dark kind of gray skin, uh, wearing sort of engineers or laborers roles. They watch the whole thing. And like, as soon as the guard goes, they kind of mutter something to each other. Uh, you kind of hear that something along the lines of like, ah, fucking Zarkirans, and then just goes back to like, or right Friends. in their own asses. Friends, uh, but they seem like to go friend. back to what they were doing. You also uh, hear okay. a voice in your head. Oh. It, who? Uh, I'm just trying to see if I've got a good setting for something like this. Let's just crank this up. Be careful, friend. If they detect you doing more, it is quite unbearable. Who's... I'm in my head. <laughs> Can you, can you hear me? I can. The range of my telepathy is not much more beyond these cells, but I can sense you at least. You're not far from you another, me. You another prisoner? Yes, well, <laughs> a forgotten prisoner perhaps. You may How call me long... Rana, Rana El or Rana. Rana, Rana, how long have you been here? <sighs> Too long. Zakira is attempting to find a way beyond my celestial resistance against mind control. She's trying to learn a way to control my kind. Uh, uh, well, I, do you have any idea where we actually are? Oh, yes. You are aboard the Serpent's Coil, Zakira's personal flagship. Serpent's Coil. Serpent's Coil. Um, okay. Uh, I need to send a message to my friends, but I can't spellcast anymore, or they're going to electrocute me some more. So... Unfortunately, so. Uh, Serpent's Coil. Serpent's Coil. I don't know anything about Serpent's Coil, do I? No, I don't. Uh, you do not. No. What about what about those two guys over there? They they don't seem too happy with. Are you saying this to the? You're thinking this to the the mysterious voice. 
Yeah. The Durgar. Yes. The Durgar are spiteful, hateful creatures. They will not show you much sympathy, but they do detest Zarkira. Loyal to Callus. They dislike the way Zarkira treats those she deems as lesser beings. Callus at least has respect for those in his empire. Zarkira sees them merely as pawns. But do not expect sympathy from them. They have not it in their hearts. Uh, It's something. It's something. Oh, God. There is Uh... another prisoner here somewhere. I, he will not. Re- they will not respond to my messages, but I sense that they are a chaotic mind. I can only hope that your moments here are peaceful and not too painful. My sympathy uh, to you. How often do they visit you? <laughs> Zakira, I think, has become bored of me. It has been day. I, it is hard to tell time. Uh, I have had several meals since last they came to experiment on me. Now I just hope for a moment of silence that I may grieve from what I have lost. And what about these uh, shackles? Do you know what they do? Ah, there was no need for them on myself, but I am aware. I once served in Callus's army, so I am familiar with them. They are called dimensional shackles. They prevent an individual from teleportation or shifting into another realm. Do they? It means they? that they greatly fear you. Such a device is not common in the Empire. Zarkira must have planned for your arrival. Feared what you might be able to do. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, that's the only spell I prepared to get out of this mess. <laughs> My sympathies. <laughs> oh, man. What is your name? Uh, uh, I'm <clears throat> uh, Quill, Kila Kadkala, from uh, Erois. Erois? The Lost World? Yeah. Uh, Zakira came down to capture one of us. I think I possess something she greatly desires. Then, I am truly sorry. It is only until she gets what you possess, what you require, what she desires. Once she has it, I am afraid that you will not be long for this world. Zarkira does not seem to like having loose threads. I mean, there's four more loose threads back on Erois. I just need to get a message to them, that's all. Maybe, perhaps, if you find a moment where they take you from your cell, you may have enough time to use your spell if you have it. But they will not treat you kindly for breaking their rules. I mean, send a message and maybe get saved. Or, and they hurt me, or they take what they want and I die. So... This is true. Until Zarkira has what she wants, I do not think she can risk killing you if she has kept you alive for now. Okay. Okay, that's that's useful. I'm sorry that I cannot be much use. I am trapped and... Well, <laughs> Zarkira has made sure that I will not struggle again against her will. Okay, uh, it, you've been very useful. You've answered more questions than I thought you'd be able to. I'm happy to speak to someone. I have been here alone. If you require anything else, just think it and I will know. Thank you. Peace be with uh, you. Gila Kadkala. Right. Now. Yeah, and then the voice goes, goes silent in your head. Uh, my plan. My well, plan. Whilst I have, after I've dashed your plans, let's yeah. jump to the party. Um, 
So as a point, Tom, you did oh, you did see, you could read Zarkira's lips. She basically said she needs 10 hours to prepare her spells, and then she's going to start coming to experiment. Um, you got 10 hours, buddy. 10 hours. <laughs> so Ooh, have geeky. a think about what you want to do. And Meanwhile, on Erois, a couple of hours pass, you know, two hours or so, as the city needs to be mopped up, people need to be rescued, healing needs to be done. Um, the dragons are driven off, the Sky Prince saved, uh, you rally against the city. Um, but yeah, it takes some time to kind of like fully root Zarkira's forces, fend off the dragons and all that kind of good stuff, you know, with time for you guys to rest and heal and, you know, make sure that everyone's safe. Uh, what do you guys do? Uh, Gusthaven is safe. Like, Gusthaven is completely fine. All of your allies survived. There was no injuries. You guys did it in... in you defeated Zarkira in, in enough time that there was never... There was no threat of injury to any of the known NPCs. Your crew has taken at least two casualties um, in the wolf pack, um, but none of the named crew uh, took any major casualties either. Um, Kamara is still alive. Injured, but alive. Um, what do you guys want to do? I throw it over to all of you friends how long was this period of cleanup and whatnot? two hours two hours or so i imagine that whole time we're looking for quill trying to find well at least lucius is like trying to look for sources or retrace basically the only thing you can find out is what nova already knew the spider thing grabbed him and they vanished that's there's like nobody else can give you more information of that unless you guys have like spells or things that you want to do that and that's the perfect time for you to you start doing that information uh i have a couple of ideas um but mm -hmm. have we had like a short rest um in that yeah, two hours i'd say part of that two hours is yeah part of that is like you guys also having the benefits of a short rest you know cool. for sure for sure for sure so if you want to spend hit dice if you want to get spells back that you get back or abilities that you get back get them now Cool. Um, also, can we say that we've maybe looted that ring and jagged faceplate that Sarkis yes, 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 yes. dropped? Yep, 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 yep. Absolutely. Um, I believe Azaria even offered to. Uh, Azaria will identify them for you, just like on the cuff, um, once everything's mm -hmm. calmed down. Uh, the ring is a ring of evasion. Um, you can look up in D&D Beyond. One of you can add it. I believe it requires attunement. The other is a Helm of Teleportation. It has oh, really? one charge. Yes. It has one charge remaining. Okay. Um, I, uh, I could, I could try and scry, maybe. See if I could scry on Quill. Um, although if he's been taken by Sakira, chances are there's probably some kind of blocking thing, like when I tried to scry on um, Starbane. Um, but it, it's worth a shot, right? Uh, or Anything at this point. For him okay. to disappear like I that, with no message, nothing, in two hours. Okay. I have a couple of ideas. I'll try scry first. Um, if not, maybe a dream. If he's asleep, I can at least appear to him in a dream and, and, and figure out if he knows where he is. Um... Otherwise, th those are my two ideas. I have a third idea. It's kind of really wacky, um, and it might blow my brain up. But maybe we should try one and two first. Let's um, try the simple ones first. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, Century Ayla, uh, anything? Do you guys want to just add anything, or are you just happy for Nova um, to go ahead? I think Ayla's probably just still really, really mad from <laughs> everything Quill that just, just happened. Vanishing. She's, yeah, for sure. She's probably making herself busy because she can't she doesn't have the magic to be able to mm. help and i think she's like probably so frustrated by that that she's mm. helping the crew out or lifting stuff around trying to trying to make herself there's, useful in other there's ways damage to the city yeah that you could absolutely yeah. just be going out into the city and being like lifting up huge chunks of rubble and breaking it up for it to be disposed of and stuff like that there's definitely yeah. busy work talking. that ayla can be doing she's yeah. not talking to anyone she's just furiously moving heavy shit around <laughs> what about sentry um, I think Sentry would like would summon Alnissix and fly around Gusthaven just looking for like any signs mm. of like Zarkira or Quill. Quill or anything. Yeah. Sure. That's your periton, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, okay. So oh whilst in that time while Nova's preparing these spells and things like that, yeah, Sentry goes off and begins flying and scouting around. Um Nova, do you want to take it away with these spells then? 
Yeah, uh, so I'll try scry first. I'm not exactly sure of how to work out the modifiers. There's a lot of words here. Um, you don't need to because you cast a spell yeah. and it doesn't work, which means that yeah. Quill is not on this plane of existence. Okay. Um, on the same plane of existence. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'd say Nova would, Nova would go, okay, Scry didn't work. Why wouldn't it work? Either he's protected from it, like Starbane, etc., or he's not on this plane of existence. Those are the conditions for the Scry spell. Otherwise, you would get a sense of like, oh, he just resisted mm. it or he's deflected yeah. it in some way or something like that. When you say plane of existence, would that point towards like he's in space? Like, yes. I'm not yeah, sure. It means he's not on Erois. Yeah, okay. So the, the, the planes, like, because my cosmology is a bit weird, right? Erois is a plane of existence. The astral sea, which is space, is its own plane of existence, but it's connected to all the other planes of existence. So it allows for, like, travel between the two. Um, the other planes are, like, you know, the planets that you visited. So Elysium, Azagrat, blah, 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 blah. You know, those are all planes of existence as well. Okay. Um,. Okay, so that didn't work. So either he is being protected by anti scry magic, or he's dead, or he's not here. Uh, he 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 he's probably on another plane of existence, which means he's probably up there in space, or he's dead. Um, didn't need to hear the third one. Um, I could I could I could I could try dream, but dream is also. I mean, at least with dream, I could ascertain that he's not on this plane of existence, because that's also a plane of existence. Um, well, we can do what, to narrow do it down. Just... I, I can't see him anywhere. There's no sign of him at all. Not on this plane. Not on this planet. <sighs> or he could. He could. He could. He could. He could. He could be. Um. I'm, uh, we don't uh, need to say that yet. We need to keep looking. Uh, magic. It could be magic. Um, other things we could be doing, maybe we could contact... Uh, the, what if we... If, if he's maybe up in astral space, uh, we, we could ask Thalia and, and go back up there in, in the Twin Star. Yes. Uh, I don't know how long that would take, though. It, uh, it could take a while to, to get that going. Now, um, let's break this down. What do we know of Zarkira? Where is she when she's not attacking Arois. Mark, mm -hmm. this is a Kim question. So mm -hmm. I have all that information that we, the intelligence that we got, and I wrote it down in my notes as intel mm. on Valkyrian uh, outposts, uh, ships, resistance groups, schematics for the Tassadar yeah. and other ships. Would mm, Valkyria's from, spaceship um, be in that? You got that from the smuggler, didn't you, out in astral space, the yeah. Eagleoth? Yeah. I would say there's a chance it might be. Zarkira does keep certain things separate from the Empire. I'm going to roll a D100, and I'm going to give this... This is... It's unlikely, but I'm going to give it a 25% chance that, 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 yes, it includes that information. So 70, 75 or higher, and the information you have includes it. Uh, I'll roll this on roll 20, um, but so you guys can see it, but it won't appear in the, the dice log because I can't roll custom dice on that yet. Okay, so, oh. yes, you, Nova spends, and I mean, it's, it, this takes time, right? So this is the, the cost of like looking through this, is it takes time, you have to scour through it. It's maybe like 30 minutes of Nova like just scanning, maybe an, even an hour of like scanning through and like checking all this information and stuff. But you find references. Um, and it's noted because Zarkira tries to keep the names of her personal ships off Valkyrian records. And the intel you have on it is that her flagship is called the Serpent's Coil. It's where it's her main base of operations. It's where she conducts most of her experiments from. Um, and there is information there that sometimes people from the Valkyrian Empire, prisoners, go missing and nobody knows where they go um and it's believed that they are either taken you know if they're not taken to one of the prison worlds uh in the empire zarkir has probably got hold of them um and is using them for nefarious purposes now whether they go to the serpent's coil you're not 100 percent sure 
but it's likely. And I think Nova is smart enough to go, well, she tries to keep these ships off the record. This is her personal flagship. She's a re she's a, a mage. She's a very intelligent sorceress. She's probably, you know, keeping them close where she can, you know, do her, her experiments and stuff. Um, so yes, I would say that you can find Serpent's Coil. Now, obviously, that doesn't have a location because it's an astral ship. It can move around. You, It could be anywhere in the astral sea. You have no idea where. Um, mm. Oh, oh, look, 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 there, there's a thing. I missed it before. I missed it before because there was so much information. But here, the serpent's coil, Um, there's some mention in the notes that we got uh, from Astral Space. But but that, that's all I have. It could be anywhere. But if 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 it's to do with Sarkira, I bet you it. She, he's there. This is something we can, we can research. We can find more information about the ships, some intel. From the other side, perhaps. Wings of Ishtar. Do they know yes. where Zarkia's yeah, ships could, are? We could contact Zellion, or uh, m maybe Thalia would know something. Um, the, the, the guy, uh, <laughs> Mal. Ma maybe Mal would know, but he was Stark Bane's. Was he Stark Bane's? He, he was killed by Zakira forces, but maybe he would know something. He was um, he, he was Valkyrian. He was part of the Valkyrian. He was Empire. Valkyrian. He, he was he not Zarkiria's agent. With those that are on our side, the wings of Ishtar sound like a good lead. They might have information better than anyone on Arois. How do we contact them, though? Uh, Quill was our contact. Mm hmm. Thalia, maybe there's some device Zarya, on Thalia's Pere ship. The Perel woman. Perel woman. She's you got go spells and stuff. Anyone? Anyone's got spells. Surely we can... Right? Yes. I don't know how it works. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys want to go and, like, go ask Azaria or, like, gather up Thalia as well and, like, ask them to do a bunch of stuff? Um, it, you, you, you can find them quite easily. Uh, Azaria is currently managing the damage to the Aethagora, her store. You can see she's kind of uh, overseeing reconstruction, doing most of the reconstruction herself via spells as well. You can see her like lifting super heavy timbers and reshaping stone and things like that. Um, Thalia is just attending to the twin start. She's just kind of you know taking that back to where it was and, and is attending to it. Uh, there's a, we'll rush through because obviously like you guys just have some quick questions. Is there anything you want to ask? What do you want to ask Thalia, or do you want to ask Thalia to do stuff? We'll go with her first. She's the easiest one to find. Um, I guess asking Th Thalia, in theory, if we were to relaunch the Twin Star and go back out into space, how long would that uh, take? I'm, I'm going to stop you there, my dear. The Cradle, I, I, we only got through the once because Palador allowed us entry back to Aroes. With the Cradle up, there's no way for the Twin Star to go back into astral space. Uh, until the Cradle is... is not there. I, I can't leave. I'm sorry. Yeah. I know you're looking for right Quillic, now. but... I'm, I'm panicking. That was an oversight. That was a massive oversight. Do you know anything about the Serpent's Coil? It's uh, apparently just, it's Sarkir's Just rumours. Yes, I've heard of it. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a ghost ship. It, uh, lots of scary stories about um, ships being run aground and people being taken prisoner and experimented on, but it's all, all smugglers' tales, I'm afraid. Um, no concrete information. Zarkira keeps things pretty close to a snake-like heart. Um, not one I have a lot of information or, or familiarity with, thank goodness. We need help from the outside then. We need to contact the wings of Ishtar. They're the only ones that can do anything. If they can get us to teleport somewhere, right? We can we can teleport there, can't we? We were going to teleport location. Starbane's ship. We if we know somewhere we could teleport there. Would you that work? You have to know the you have to know the specific sequence for the the teleport to work. Because the, the, the way that the, the Valkyrian ships' teleportations work was work is they go across planes, but you have to know the exact code um, for it to work. I know this is... You know the code for the Tassadar. You do. I know yes. this, this is a risk. I think it puts us at more risk if we go to the Tassadar ourselves. However, I, what I'm going to throw another spanner in the works. Quill was the one who knew the teleportation circle. Right. He was the one who knew the code sequence. None of you know it. What Contact if? the wings. Ask them if they know anywhere they know. that we can go anywhere close. 
if we can get close enough to wherever ship face is, then we can jump on one of their ships, right? They've got ships. Do you have any astral communication device on this ship? I, I have the communication devices, yes, but they're designed to work whilst out in astral sea. The, the cradle, this is perhaps something that you wouldn't know because you've always lived here. It, it, I can't communicate. My devices here won't go beyond the cradle. Uh, if you had a means of... Uh, I know Valkyrian has technology that allows his communication to go great distances. Mine is meant for short-range communications only. Nothing significant, I'm afraid. Um, the Twin Star is, is a smuggler's vessel. It, it, it's not a, a grand battleship. I, I'm very limited in the resources I had aboard it. It, it was meant for, you know jumping on cargo ships and stealing what they had. It's really not designed for this sort of thing, I'm afraid. Nova, you've contacted Valor before in a dream. If anyone can get intel on the Serpent's Coil, where it is... I was thinking that 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 was another option, yeah. Maybe dream, either dream on Quill or dream on Valor, but I guess... If we dream on Quill, then Quill wouldn't actually know where the ship is, would he? Um, and also, the other, yes. the other thing with Dream as well is it's um, Nova would have to sit there and wait until Quill went to sleep to contact, or Valor went to sleep. So yeah. you could be waiting yeah. a long time, for example. Yeah. Was there um, in the um, Colossus construction facility? Was there mm. was that Zarkira room. Was there anything in there that we could use? Like, any devices, any... You didn't see any devices, Zarkira. no. Apart from the... There was the brain, but the brain's gone now. It's much, Yeah, but he squish. There was no there was no Magitek. That was one of the strange things about the, the Mind Flayer's room. There was no Magitek there. Just the brain. Mm. Squishy. The device. Yeah. And it seemed to be that the brain maybe was something that they used, maybe. You could maybe theorize that the brain was some sort of communication system. Oh, <laughs> Oh. oh goody! Well, <laughs> um, I mean, I put it in there what? for a reason. <laughs> really weird question, Mark. Sure. Yep. Given given that Quill is like champion of Hesper and all that, and mm. super powerful and like level fifteen mm. and cool and stuff, does he count as a demigod? He does not. But I would say you can certainly try that spell with Hesper. Okay. Um, I have another idea, but, uh, it could go really horribly wrong and melt a bit of my brain and put me out of action for a while. Sorry, what? Uh, uh, I need to lay out all our other options, perhaps, before your brain melts, Nova. There's not too much of that going around with me being on the team, so I feel like I, I need your brain to exist. Please. Okay. I could contact Hesper and ask for his help. How he likes that? Quill. That could totally work, right? The, the Maybe. brain melty part? It Why? could go horribly wrong and backfire, but it'll only be for a while until I take a rest. It's, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know. Surely you say backfire. What do you mean? Well, what are you gonna do? contacting a very powerful titan, god, spirit, demigod, sage, long dead sage, mysterious entity from another plane. Stuff could go wrong. Yeah, and it's more that because you're not a direct follower, you're. it's like trying to hijack a phone signal, right? Where a cleric is just like, hey, yo, Hesper, what's up? Yeah, good to talk to you, man. You're like trying to like hack into the phone and like, yo, Hesper, where you at? You know, it's, it's you know, that's the difference, right? And therefore, that god might not like being interfered with and may choose to mm. send something back. Yeah. Um, he likes might be like, Quill and phone. Who dis? Squad, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like if we're going Century. to be potentially going onto the Tassadar or on Zarkira's ship, we will need everyone we can get. Maybe consider that a last resort, perhaps? Yeah. Okay. The longer we wait, the more Quill is in danger. I'm also worried about reaching out to him directly in case that jeopardizes him and he's punished for it. Could we find a cleric we trust and ask them 
No, I don't know how sending works. I was going to ask them to ask Valor, but I would. Yeah. They need no. to. They need to know who yeah, it no. is. Unfortunately, <laughs> you yeah, could no. ask a you could ask a cleric of Hesper if you knew somebody who was connected to the gods to speak to Hesper on your behalf and save the risk to Nova's brain. You'd need to find one powerful enough or somebody connected enough, like a big dragon. Isn't that cleric who came with us uh, to Gust There was the druid. Was the yeah, druid. There, yeah, there was a druid. Yeah. It was a druid. One of the shepherds. I mean, Scorb. Yeah. Scorp, that's it. Scorp. You got it. Smeek. Smeek's Smeek. the perfect one. Get the ghost of Smeek. He'll do it. It does seem to transcend uh, space and time. Everybody's here. But yeah, that's the uh, that's another option. Like, uh, you know, they the, the clerics, yeah, sending, you have to know the person. Um, and again, it can't go certain... Uh, there's restrictions on it. Um, but they could try and contact Hesper using things like commune or, you know, other powerful spells. Um... All right. Well, I'm gonna let you guys think, and when we come back to you guys, I want like a like we're gonna speak to this person. We want to do this kind of like plan, right? So feel free to like use the like roll twenty chat to like chat and have a plan. Because I want to cut mm. back to Mr. Tom Hazel. Hello. Uh, on board in his little prison cell. Um, an hour passes. Do you want to like take a short rest or something? Or uh, I, yeah, I'll take a short rest. Hell yeah, I'll uh, okay. Do that for sure, for sure, for sure. I've got okay. a ton of dice to roll. Why not? Um, sure. I can heal up. <clears throat> uh, boom. And yeah, my, my, my question is, do you have like anything you want to try and do? Uh, is there any questions you have? Uh, yeah, so I heal 40 from that short rest. That's pretty good. Um, I, I kind of want to spend some time studying these uh, gauntlet things, the shackles. Is there mm -hmm. any way I can determine... <clears throat> I mean, I, I know what the spell is now. I, mm -hmm. I kind of want to determine how powerful they are, what level they are. Uh, well, I will say, you know, being the, the kind of uh, a priest of the god of magic, you don't... I mean, because you, you can cast identify, but you don't have the material components to do it, right? So you can't actually cast identify right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I've taken all my stuff, so sure. I'll do that. Make an arcana check for me. Okay. Uh, plus seven. What's that? 20. Okay. You don't know the exact details of these things. However, the runes on them, pretty powerful. You don't think that this is a versus level of spell thing. You think that these things have been built to do one thing, which is stop somebody traveling via magic, like as in teleportation or planar shifting. Whilst these things are on you, it, it ain't gonna happen. Doesn't matter what level spell, you can't travel via magic. You can't go into another realm, which would include the ethereal plane, because that's a technically another plane of existence. Uh, I know. You can't I, uh... teleport. <laughs> you couldn't even you couldn't even misty step with these things on. It prevents oh, really? teleportation and planar travel. Um but they are, they're like manacles, like they're, they're made from a very sturdy looking metal. Um, you don't think you're strong enough to break these. Oh God. But yeah, they are, you know, designed I mean, to do this one thing. You don't think they do anything else. You think that that's their primary, primary job is to stop you from teleporting or plane shifting or doing any nonsense. But they are a spell, right? Like... No, these are a magic item. So I couldn't dispel potentially hmm okay i mean you could try and cast a spell magic on them dispel magic can sometimes have an effect on magical items uh, uh one creature object or magical effect within range you could try so i'll <laughs> i mean this dude is going to come over and zap me again but uh i will dispel at fourth level okay that's interesting so you go to cast the spell and as you're about to cast it there there is a flash in the room and the room seems to respond you cast it at fourth level yeah yeah the spell is countered so something in the room suppresses your dispel magic um an alarm starts going off. Uh-oh. Uh, 
I was just trying to heal again. I was just trying to heal again. Honest. Okay. Uh, this time it's about 30 seconds. Uh... Hey, what did we tell you before? Harmless spells. Don't zap me again, please. Don't zap me again. He goes over to a control panel. Only way you learn. What? For <laughs> this time, forty-five points of force damage. Wow. Just like rushes through you like a wave. Um. What if I cast again? You can't kill me. Zarkira wouldn't like it if you killed me. We'll see about that. He then touches something else on the side of the panel. I need you to make a Constitution saving throw. Oh, fuck. Uh, constitution. Uh, 14. 14. You feel the gravity in the room increase. Like, it's like a weight is being pressed down on you until you are, like, on the floor, unable to move. Completely, like, pushed down onto the ground, like this crushing weight on top of you. Um, Shit. My hollow bones. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's, you know, you're not taking damage, but you just can't move. Leave you like that for a while. See if you've still got any smart comments. Uh, quite a few, I think. Uh, and he walks away, leaving this pressure on, leaving you just like <laughs> pinned down. Oh. Oh! I've got a counter spell room? Against uh. certain magics, it seems. It didn't trigger when you cast um, Aura of Vitality. Ew. Yeah. Mm. I mean, a harmless spell. Why would they counter that? Um, oh, maybe because dispel magic is the exact type of thing that they definitely don't want people casting to like. Well, get yeah, their <laughs> um, that makes sense. You do um, notice, even from your prone position, the Durgar are kind of looking over again. Uh, they see this kind of guard, like you know, giving you trouble, and they're kind of watching. And then they go back to what they're doing. Uh, yeah, but I mean, there's that guard still just sitting around. Um, He's not. You well, can't. Vis you can't physically see him. He's he's walked off somewhere. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, is is uh, was it Rana? Was that their name? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rana. It's a feminine voice. You think it's uh, a woman? Um, I want to think some more. Mm -hmm. Um, to them. So, just so I'm on the same page here, they've got uh. Shackles that stop me from teleporting or changing dimensions, and also this room counters any spells. Is there anything My else I should be aware of? The room won't counter any spell, but certain magics, yeah. My understanding of similar facilities in Valkyrian's forces, they certain spells are programmed into the, the prisons. Uh, any If somebody attempts to cast one of those spells, it will automatically try and counter it. It cannot do so at a powerful level. It must do so at a base level, however. So powerful magic can get through, um, but it is difficult. And the more you attempt to resist, they will keep a closer eye on you as well. There's no doubt I'm sure you are suffering now. Yep, been zapped twice and now I can't get up at all. <laughs> I'm kind of trapped here. Uh, I'm sorry. What about this other prisoner? You said you were trying to message them, but they weren't responding anymore. I can barely sense them. There is something strange about their mind, as if they are in many places at once. They won't respond. I don't know anything about them. You never saw them or spoke to them before? <laughs> saw them. I am afraid that one of the first things Zarkira took from me was my sight. Oh. Oh, I see. Along with my uh, wings. Oh, good. Um, okay. Uh, I'm trying to think of a plan here. I'm, I'm really trying to think. I should be so wise, and I can't come up with a plan. It seems she's thought of everything. She is a very intelligent and sadistic woman. Cunning and cruel. But there are weaknesses. She's arrogant. She underestimates those she sees as lesser beings. Save your strength for now, Kilek Adkolar. 
don't antagonize them further. There is more suffering for you ahead. Make sure you are strong enough to resist them when it comes. I wish only that I could help you make up for all the mistakes I have made. Not that I regret them. Hmm. Yeah. I don't. I don't think this, but I. I was thinking of, you know, they were they were part of the Valkyrian Empire at one point. <laughs> I mean, uh, you've encountered, you've seen on Elysium, like the Valkyrian Empire is pretty vast. Like it includes lots of different creatures, Eladrin, devils, um, you know, centaurs, orcs, Eterna, celestials, you know. Hmm. Okay. Uh, anything else, Still, Quill? I get the impression they were arrested just because they were celestial and they, they were trying to figure out some way of maybe controlling them um i i don't think so like i'm i'm currently stuck to the ground and yep. uh yeah i might try higher level <laughs> magics next time um okay yeah but that's, uh, that's me for now you're left there for at least an hour by the way with this pressure just pinning you to the ground I don't um, imagine right, that's a short rest is it <laughs> no you cannot short rest nope. in this state nope um, we cut back to Erois and the party so what do you guys want to do what's the plan um, so our plan is to go to the Winchester order a point and wait for this all to blow over okay cool love the um, movie there's reference there's also been some discussion of KFC as well um Okay. Chicken nice. for dindins. Yeah. Just nice. Yeah. Spare chicken for dindins. Right. I would yeah. love. I could. I could murder a KFC right now. I'll tell you that. Uh, <laughs> after like, really like two weeks of dieting, I'm like, mm. oh, I gotta go for a KFC mm. right now. Let me tell you. Um. Anyway, real plan. Um. Yeah. Uh. Someone else want to read it out? Sentry. Go uh, to. Oh, do you want to go for it, Sentry? I don't mind. We'll just... Go into yep. the Star Sorry Cathedral, asking for help to send a sending spell to the wings of Ishtar. Boost Nova's saving throw and cast the spell for Hesper. If that doesn't okay. work. So, Nova probably has a better notes. I know that the priestess in Gusthaven is a Hesper cleric. I can't remember their name, and it's going to take me a while to dig through Ooh. my notes to find. Yeah, well, we want to go to the place where Quill was rezzed, essentially, and get her. Yeah, so that's exactly it. It's her. Yeah. Yeah. That's the main thing, is the Star Story Cathedral is where Quill was um, resurrected. Let me... I might have it, actually. I don't actually have the name. I don't Uh, know. It's episode 33, I think. No, that's fine. I Uh, might have it No, not 33. That's bullshit. Where is it? I had, like, a whole note thing about Gusthaven, but I can't find it. I think I got it in my uh, recap. Hang on. (laughs) <laughs> I don't think you got that. I wrote oh, everything. Was it Eris? Eris, the light seer at Star Sorrow Cathedral. That's it. It's, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yep, Star Seer Eris. There you go. Um, uh, older lady, uh, you make your way back there. It has taken some damage, but you find her uh, helping a number of uh, acolytes and this elderly high elf woman uh, healing uh, citizens who have been injured. You can see, and it's it's not magical healing. They're kind of treating them with, you know, traditional medicine. You know, they can't afford to have everybody magically healed. Um, but like people that got injured by building collapses or by the hybrids or anything like that. Um, there's also out, you kind of notice that the, a section of like outside the cathedral has been cordoned off by a giant sort of uh, globe of shimmering magic um, that seems to be, you can see people taking bodies inside it. Uh, looks to be those that deceased that were killed in the attacks um but inside you find uh, the priestess eris uh, and a number of uh, acolytes all tending to the the injured um when she sees you she just kind of bows so deeply noble warriors of Aroes, how can we thank you once again you have helped save our beloved city and our beloved sky prince uh, are any of you injured do you require any aid we do require aid yes um Fortunately, none of us are injured, as we know. However, we have lost one of our members, Kilek. Champion Kilek is not with you. Is he... I'm afraid that the resurrection can only be performed once if he is passed beyond the veil. We're hoping that's not the case. We're hoping you can aid us in contacting... I see. ...him through... He, he got uh, taken. I, he got zip-zapped somewhere that we don't know. We don't know where I, he is. I can, 
I can perform a sending ritual, yes. I, I can attempt that. We know that he's not on a Rois, so oh. any sort of spell like that may not reach him. But we know you are worshippers of Hesper. And we're wondering yes. if that is a potential avenue where you could wish contact. For me to the Lord himself, the Lord of Knowledge himself. He like is a champion of Hesper, and yes, for him I'm sure to he know would wish that no captive potentially by Zakira. That might I be have his. one last vestige of my power. I have just enough to commune with the Lord of Knowledge, if that is what you require, and contact him for his guidance and to let him know what has become of the champion. Yes, it would mean a lot to us if you could spare us that. Of course, come. Let us do it at the main at the main altar uh, before the Lord, where we resurrected the champion. A place of such spiritual significance will likely help with my spellcasting. Mm. Come, and she kind of leads you. She takes like she'll offer her hands. Actually, she actually kind of holds out like for two of you to take her hands, as if you know, like caring for children, leading them away, kind of thing. Um, I don't know if there's any yeah, preference for who wants to hold the old lady's hand. <laughs> yeah, Nova. I want to hold Lucius. the old lady's hand. Sure, uh, and she'll kind of lead Ayla, you guys. No yeah, no and then Sentry kind of behind, like you know, uh, you guys make your way back to this room. It, it's kind of a small chapel where you resurrected Quill, but there is this beautiful statue to Hesper. Um, she kneels down in front of the altar. Um, she lights some incense and she kind of clasps her holy symbol. Beloved Lord of Knowledge, Lord of Magic, He who writes, He who knows. I seek your guidance, and the guidance of the champions of Aroes. Your champion, Kilek, has been taken in battle, and his companions do not know where he is. Can you guide them? Can you guide me? She kind of closed her eyes, and you see her eyes almost fill with clouds, like Quills does. Champions of Aroes, do you know whom has taken Quilek? Quilek? Zakira. Lord, it is Zakira. There is a moment, and then the spell seems to end, and she's like, I, I don't understand. I, I should have had one more question. And then the room begins to glow. Bright light begins to fill it completely until you are all stood in nothing but is basically a white box everything seems to blend away the the feeling of wind blowing against your skin the kind of sensation of air thinning as if you've risen up high into the world and in a flash the room suddenly reverts back to the chapel it once was and there stood kind of cradling Eris this elderly priestess is a much older looking Hesper. You see six wings kind of curled and folded, a great staff held in his hand as he's almost crouched like in an embrace around his priestess. She is knocked unconscious, like the presence of her god renders her completely unconscious, but the rest of you kind of stand, and this is not an illusion. You feel that this is the Hesper stood before what? you. You guys get to meet him before me? <laughs> what? Sent yeah! Just like, bow, just like instantly just like drop to a knee. Yeah, I'm averting my gaze. Kneeling Champions, as well. there is little time for these pleasantries. You must tell me everything you know. What has happened to my champion, Kilek? Uh, uh, he was... He was taken by Zarkira, by some sort of creation that she she had. It paralyzed him and took him, and we think he's aboard her flagship in astral space, the Serpent's Coil. We you don't know how to get well. there. You have done well to find this out. This saves me some of what I must do. We, you must understand the Eye of the Storm, the blessing that I gave to Kilek, and the spear that he recovered from the temple. Zarkira cannot possess these powers. If she acquires the power of the Eye of the Storm, I fear what she may do with it. And the spirit of Johandrius, the Tempest Dragon, resides within the Spear of Oracles, something Zarkira has long possessed. We cannot, at any cost, 
allow her to gain these things. You must come with me now, champions. There is only one way I know to recover Quillek. And he just offers a hand. Come with me now. We have no time okay. to spare. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You guys yeah. will grab yeah. his hand and you feel yourself whoosh, pulled away at an alarming rate. And then you arrive. You look around in these great mirrored crystalline halls like grand archways and cathedrals but where they should end they do not they repeat and continue and continue and continue and continue with an infinite number of corridors spreading out behind them and in the very center a single great column of light from the very sky comes down to reside over a crystal sarcophagus at the very center this is what you think it is. The Halls of Infinite Resplendence. The seat of the Titan's power on Erois. It was not my desire to bring you here before the time, but my champion is in far greater danger than you realize, as is the fate of Erois. I am sorry that the others could not be here. Atelicus, as you will soon discover, is plagued by a madness. His followers will request for your aid in dealing with him. I wish you all the best in resolving this matter. Kilara has become despondent, despaired with the fate of Erois. She believes the world is doomed and that her final task is to herald the spirits of the deceased, praying that they will be kept safe from Hadar. Sayana does her best to keep the spirits of Erois high. And Zephyr, well, my chaotic sibling, does what she always does. Prepares for the storm. For now, I have brought you here because this is where I am strongest. And what I am going to do will require much of my power, if not all of it. I will require your aid. I will need you to help me contain the divine energy within me to prevent it from running wild to keep my mind focused. Absolutely. What do we need to do? How, how can we help? Those of you who have the knowledge of magic, Nova Vija, Lucius, Elanasto, I will need you to help... Uh, you will need to help me keep the conduit of my power contained. Do not let it spiral out of control. Your knowledge of the arcane world will allow you to do this. Think of it as an errant wave of magic. Your Eterna, Nova Vija, will be able to guide you in this. Lucius, you have an understanding of magic. It will come naturally. Guardian, Sentinel Prime. You have within you many spirits. Spirits of your people, yes. Yes. Call upon them. I will need them to help guide versions of myself home, to act as beacons of a sort. I will be able to hone in on their magical power, way of returning to myself. And as for you, Ayla, warrior of storms, this will create errant wards of magic. Your strength will be needed to keep your companions safe while they focus on other things. Can you do this? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. I think. I don't know. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Yeah. Just keep them safe. Protect them from the aberrant energies that will try to buffet them away. The nature of the sky, the nature of magic will rebel against what I'm attempting. I had hoped, I had hoped to see Quill, but this will have to do. And with that, you see he kneels in front of this crystal sarcophagus, this 
you know, nine foot tall humanoid, but you can see he's old, way older than he's ever been depicted. He looks like he's probably in like his 60s, 70s. He's gray haired, gray bearded, his skin wrinkled and weathered. He looks worn. He looks like his power has been fading or perhaps being used up rapidly. But he looks up, taps his staff on the ground, and you begin to see copies of Hesper, spectral versions of himself, fly up. The wings extend as ten, hundred, a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand, a million versions of this god begin to fly up in every direction possible through the earth, up into the air, to the sides, as he sends out these versions of himself to the cosmos. And as he does so, the power around him begins to grow wildly out of control. I need you guys to make some skill checks to help Hesper keep this in check. <laughs> to do so, you will be making skill checks using skills as you require. Uh, as you see this kind of sphere of like, or not even a sphere, like just these eddies of magic beginning to kind of break away from Hesper out of his control. They need to be almost guided back into place either through magical means or by physical force, like these kind of currents blasting away from him. Several of them almost beginning to threaten you guys. What do you guys do? Right. Um, <laughs> pop <a> yes. <laughs> Things like rages and stuff like that, <laughs> by all means. Uh, you have a few moments here if there's any spells you want to cast, but I'll probably say you only have enough time to cast, like, one buff spell, uh, if you have okay. one. Or rage, in Ayla's case. Ayla is raging. You see the storms kind of yeah. crackle up. Um, I'll pop a uh, level one bless. That's... Okay, so you bless everybody, basically, in the party. Uh, uh, Nova, Lucius, and uh, Ayla. Ayla, okay. So all of you get a d4 to skill checks and things like that. Okay. It's hard not to stand in total awe what? and uh, <laughs> stupor at this. Mm. Yeah. But uh, Lucius is yeah. going to try and focus, harness that innate power of sorcery within him and just try okay. to command the arcana around him. And okay. Sure. So, you, like, trying to on. physically will it contain it. Uh, yeah. Give me just a. This would just be charisma, I think, for Lucius. This is just d20 plus charisma. But this is kind of the save. This will be the, easier for you. Yeah. Is it a save? And or you get a the... d4. Uh, it's it's a raw check, but add the d4 from bless. It's just a, a d20 plus your charisma bonus. And, uh, yeah, maybe plus proficiency as well. Actually, I'd say. Oh. So yeah, basically a saving throw. Uh, well, that's so 20, 24. Uh, that was a regular so you, check. Usually I have double watch with my as, save. Okay, so with these eddies of magic, Lucius, to your eyes, to everybody else, they're kind of almost translucent, colorless. You just feel the pressure of them. But to Lucius, myriads of colors, a rainbow, a spectrum, of shades and hues unlike anything you've seen. It's like this cascade of prismatic color around you. And you can tell that some of them are brighter shades and there are two which you know you have mastery over. You see this orange kind of column, this eddy of magic pouring off of Hesper, going rampant, going wild. And with your will, knowing how to shape, how to bend, how to pull apart that specific color of magic, you push it, you shape it, you mold it back into place, pushing it back up into this current as more of these spectral Hespers fly off in all directions. Sweat pouring down your brow, you kind of force it back with your own intuitive magic that is one success. Nova. Um, uh, if I, I had a moment, like just before when we were preparing, mm -hmm. I actually want to use the rod of alertness and embed mm -hmm. it into the ground. Um, okay. So in kind of 
planting this rod into the center of the room, everyone mm -hmm. gains a plus one to AC and a plus one to saving throws. Okay. Um, there's sure. some other things as well, but I don't think they'll be relevant to this situation. Okay. So you plant um, this rod in and this like aura of protective magic and, and alertness uh, emanates. Emanates is the word I was looking for uh, from it. Uh, mm -hmm. What would you like to do, Nova? Tiangong uh, in hand, you feel guess... Tiangong you know, is aware of what's happening. So I guess uh, with Tiangong, I'll just kind of, I guess, mentally nod at Tiangong. Mm -hmm. um, we've got this, and I guess raise Tiangong up and similar to Lucius, try and channel this magic. Um, okay. So you want to do it so through guess... Tiangong itself? Yeah, I'd say this is going to be the yeah. same thing, though. So you can use it. So, you know, I should have done it as a saving throw for Lucius, but yeah, basically D20, Charisma, and Proficiency mod, and a D4 from Sentry. And a plus one from the Rod of Alertness as well. And a plus one. Okay. So I got yep. plus 10 saving throw, uh, which is good because I rolled an 8. Plus 10 is 18. Plus 2 from Sentry. 19, 20. Plus 1 from the Rod is uh, 21. Okay. There's a moment <clears throat> you kind of hold Tiangong up. You feel Tiangong's voice kind of echo through you. This is a great amount of power. I am unsure if we can contain it, Nova Vija. Immense divine strength. And you can you can feel Tiangong's you know, own power beginning to break away. But you steal yourself. You kind of send this, this force of will conjuring up images of Quill in your mind and you sense that Tiangong grows stronger with it and you pull on all the knowledge, all the formulas, you begin to see the very nature of the spells of this immense thing that Hesper is trying to do, all this magic pouring off of him and you see the geometry, you see the science behind it and Communicating that to Tiangong, you find a way. Tiangong fires one beam here, which deflects a section of the magic into another. Then with another kind of spell, you create almost like a barrier that pushes it back in as you feel this kind of force. A success, but just barely. Sentry and Ayla. Ayla, you can see Nova and Lucius are almost being blown away by these spells. Like, if they're kind of not anchored in place, one or two of them is going to go flying as they're trying to resist, but you can see them sliding across this strange marble, hard light flooring, whatever it's made of. This, the very force of this divine magic is almost pushing them away. Um, and Sentry, um, would, and yeah, I guess Ayla. We'll go with Ayla first, and then we'll come to Sentry last. I'll get in the middle of that and grab both of them and mm -hmm. anchor myself in the middle of the room and just make myself just stand in place. And if there's any residual lightning that happens to be around, everyone should be within my aura as well for protection a little bit. Okay. Um, but yeah, I guess it's probably just strength. Athletics. This is athletics, athletics? for sure. Yep. sure. Yep. And you are raging, so you have advantage. Because um, you are basically holding them against the force of a god. You're basically you're like a titan, effectively. You're like holding them against the, the very current of his magic. 28 with all the blessings. You manage to hold them in place. You feel your own body, 12. like things impact you, like this force, almost like you feel your ribs bruise. You feel this kind of power threatening to break you apart. But with a grip on either of them and making sure not to hurt them, you hold them in place, giving them, self, giving them something to anchor to and taking the brunt of this strength against your own chest. You tense your muscles, you slide an inch, and then half an inch, and then a centimeter, and then you stop and you do not move again, holding them in place as they're forcing this magic back into this column of energy. Meanwhile, sentry, these... All of these spirits of Hesper are flying out, but none of them are returning. You just sense these dozens and dozens of them are just flying out into who knows where. What would you like to do? Um, I would like to look into the Matrix and uh, just and summon summon all the Guardians out to, I guess, like form like a giant ring. Like all these golden guardian spirits, just to like corral the spirits in, keep them in place. Um, I think Sentry would say something like, um, "Guardians, be my heart, my spirit, my strength. I need you now. Eroes needs you. We are strong together. 
till we are all cool. till all are one and just some I yeah. think that that is an excellent persuasion check I think that this is you trying to use sentries command and leadership to kind of guide these guardians to act as this beacon so I think that that is a persuasion check for me please okie dokie so d4 on top of this mm -hmm. oh no you don't get it do you no, so this I don't is get just the bless no no. So it'll be a uh, 16. 16. You, you send these guardians, and the guardians come out. They obey your orders. You feel them all kind of rise up till all are one echoes through your mind. The guardians step out, and you feel all these spirits trying to form this ring. But the force of this magic is is you know threatening to blow them away they're having to just like grip onto this these chains like almost the this this connection between the matrix and them they're barely managing to hold on not through lack of trying they want to do this but the very eddies of the magic itself is threatening to blow them away uh, that is going to be one failure uh the rest of you so lucius nova ayla you guys can sense that Sentry's trying to summon these Guardians to act as like a beacon, but something is preventing her from working. You guys, uh, is there anything any of you guys would want to do? I guess Ayla wouldn't actually see these Guardians. Ayla is just holding the guys, but the magical amongst you can definitely sense the spirits. I think Lewis, uh, Lewis? <laughs> Lucius having a connection with Sentry's Matrix is going to reach out yeah. his hand directly uh -huh. to the matrix and form a connection and try and communicate himself to corral them and uh, infuse all of his font of magic that he's got remaining into it uh, to keep them contained. How many points is that? Not very many left. One point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's, he's okay. spent. I mean, do you want to try and give more than that font of magic? Yeah, like... I, I might actually use uh, some spell slots to fuel this i'm going to use, use the rest of i've got a fifth level uh but they're all bonus actions so it's like a six well seconds. i mean for now for the sake of narrative you spend however many spell slots you want to get and get however many sorcery points you can and then you tell me that number 14 14 make a that's almost full I think that in in doing this, make an Arcana check, but give yourself a plus fourteen bonus to this roll. Oh. Okie dokie. Wow. Uh, and technically a D four. Oh damn. <laughs> oh. I'll roll the D four. Would the rod help God. as well? This isn't a saving yeah, throw, saving so no. Twenty two yeah. plus the the bonus fourteen. Fourteen. Thirty six. Yeah. Will that do it, Mark? <laughs> you reach out. And Sentry, you feel like you're kind of, you know, struggling to like lift up the Guardians and it's, you want to protect them. You don't want them to be hurt or destroyed. So like mm. you're trying to protect them as well, with, but you know, trying to let them kind of send out this beacon, be this heart to like guide Hesper back. But the eddies, the magic is too strong. And you see Lucius just like reaching out with a hand. Uh, and you can sense this power welling up inside of him and it's almost like beginning to kind of almost show through his skin this prismatic color and it's not just blue and orange it's all of these shifting colors you begin to see lucius's eyes begin to flicker where they've been blue and orange before now other colors are beginning to kind of like show underneath his skin is glowing and he's reaching out what do you do I think Sentry would like, she'd see his hand and like she'd reach for Lucius's hand, like put a hand on his shoulder and like yeah. just, just, yeah, just get that. Just you kind of like grip. And, yeah. yeah, like you put your hand on his shoulder, Lucius like grabs you and touches the Matrix and you feel this surge of energy, this power rush through and that the guardians latch onto it and they all seem to swell in size becoming almost as tall as root prime they grab one arm the next one grabs the next they form a circle around all of you with lucius and ayla and nova at the center of it beside hesper and this great golden light just seems to rot upwards one Hesper comes back, then two, then ten, then a hundred, then a thousand. <laughs> and then light. When the light dims, an ancient, old, 
looking Hesper remains. Aged, impossibly old, in a few moments. He kind of... <sighs> in his hand is a book. He puts it on the ground. I have found a serpent's coil. Nova Vija. This book, The Wayfinder's Guide. My last. I have attuned one of its crystals to astral space beside the ship. I cannot get you inside, but it will get you to where the ship is, as well as a few other tricks and spells. <laughs> My divine energy is spent until Siaska returns. I am gone. Tell Quillick, tell Quill, I am proud of him. And he fades into nothing, leaving just the book behind. And that's where we're going to take a break so I can blow my nose. <sighs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Oh. You may, uh, you should find the Wayfinder's Guide on D&D Beyond Nova Vija. I will. Okay. What? Jesus. Wow. That well, that was the coolest uh... thing in the world, and also I'm very upset. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Oh, he's so oh. cool. He's so cool. Uh, Pretty yeah. badass. Jesus. Holy yeah. crap, this book. Yeah? Okay. Where you find his guy? Uh, okay. So, yes, as he mentioned, one of the gemstones on the cover, Nova, is lit. And holding it, you know that it is attuned to a very specific location on the outside of the serpent's coil. Now, I will say one thing to think about on the break. You know that Astral Sea... You, it, it's like cold and there's no air. You're going to need some way to, you know, deal with that. You're also going to need to find a way inside the ship from outside, but it will take you directly to the serpent's coil uh, when you wish to use it. Um, awesome, cool, awesome. God and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take a quick quick mm. breaky break uh, there. Yeah. I certainly need one, so I'm gonna go. I'll be back in a minute. Yes. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I need to get right. this freaking eyelash out of my eye. Uh, um, hey, so, re yeah. real quick. Yeah. I know that the first donation uh, mentions you, so I was just going to say this real quick. Um, this was a donation from yesterday from Balu that says, Hi, Rollers. Good old Sopru from New Zealand. Looking forward to more epic level fights. Wish I could make a row as live, but I, uh, I get up at 5 a.m. to run a session for my USA mates. So here's a tar from me. Re, Damn. can you say the chicken run line you said last week again for my wife, please? <laughs> I don't want to be a pie. I don't like gravy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. We'll have your break now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, that was $35. Thank you very much, Barley. Um, and yeah, 5 a.m. to run a session for your USA friends. Holy crap. Um, Amazing. Very, very cool. Thank you very much. Uh, Baron Von Lux has donated with Hi Hi Rollers, Clear Skies. I've been watching you guys since the very beginning of Lightfall, as today is my 26th birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, I thought I would give you a present as thanks for introducing me to this wonderful game. Thank you very much, Baron Von Lux. And again, happy birthday. Happy 26th birthday indeed. Um, enjoy your D&D. Glad we uh, introduced you. And another donation from Baron Von Lux. I'm also writing a D&D inspired book. Mark, you and uh, Mercer are my DM icons as I love how you bring such raw emotion into the games you run. Yeah, that was some today. 
And Storm Chaser, I hope that all of you find mm. some way to get Quill back. They found a way. They found a way. Uh, <laughs> um, Serico has donated with Tom. Please keep both intros. This is gold. Uh, I'll see. Uh, I'll, I'll see. Marsh Tomp. Uh, Marsh Tomp is donating three hours early. Wait, are we not even at the start of the stream? Oh, no. This was at five. Marsh Tomp is donating three hours early because of that ad. Tom, Troth, um, uh, I never uh, thought this would happen, but I, Lim Marsh Tomp, is speechless. Praise Swordfish. Praise Swordfish. Uh, thank you very much, Marsh Tomp. Yeah, it was a good ad. It's always Enjoyed filming that one. Uh, Run I Dreamer uh, has donated with Hi Hi Rollers. Uh, also, uh, Tom, it's pronounced like Rooney Dreamer. Uh, that, <laughs> I mean, the pronunciation guide you've put here still looks like it's pronounced Runny Dreamer. So <laughs> I'm going to go with Rooney Dreamer. Uh, Clear Skies from Germany. Uh, well, not really. It has been raining the last week. Anyway, I am really excited to see if Divine Intervention will work. I need a long rest. I need a lo another long rest before I can try a Divine Intervention. But it's OK. I think the gang have done their own Divine Intervention um, in some way. Uh, we went straight Vivi to Daddy. Dream. We called Daddy. Went, Daddy! Went straight, <laughs> went straight to Papa Hesp. Daddy! Mm. Um, not only that, went straight to uh, Halls of Infinite Resplendence. All these things I wanted to do, and you got to do it before me. <laughs> God damn it! I kind of wanted to ask. Um, I kind of wanted to ask Hesper for a key, but I felt that were, probably wasn't the right time to do it. <laughs> I know yeah. you're dying, Hesper, but can I have a key, please? Thanks. While, while you're here, <laughs> um, Vivi Dream has donated a quarter hundo. Uh, thank you very much. With high rollers, clear skies. I live in good old um, uh, American Pacific Northwest, and this is the first live stream I've ever watched. I'm at work right now. Don't tell my boss. Don't tell. Don't tell. Secret. Uh, I've been watching the show since the beginning of Aroes. I love you all. Thank you very much, Vivi Dream, and good luck avoiding your boss. Um, if he comes over, just say it was... No, it's not d and I'm not watching d and online. It's porn. <laughs> Honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somehow that's less embarrassing. I don't know. <laughs> um, Sanaki7117, $150. Uh, a wow. hundo and a half. Thank you. Whoa. From Sanaki. Thank That's you very much. And they say, hey, high rollers, long time VOD viewer, first time live. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> thought that I would show my love and appreciation for all the laughs, tears, and uh, the spine chilling game. Thank you very much, Sanaki. Yeah, it's spine chilling. This one, this one in particular, oh boy, it's spicy. I love it. Um, but yeah, 150 from Sonaki. Thank you so, so much. Thank you um, very much. That is awesome. Uh, I will read the rest at the end if you guys want to talk about sponsors for a bit and maybe that bit <laughs> while I'm not here. Yeah, you go grab a drink. Uh, so I'm going to say, while Trot's eating something, uh, big thank you to both of our sponsors. I'm sure Trot will do a funny thing, maybe. Um, but I'm going to say big thank you to both of our sponsors, NordVPN and D&D Beyond. Uh, make sure you check them both out. Uh, there are links uh, for both in the chat right now and in the video description, uh, as well as a code for VPN. Um, you can use code HRDND to get a two-year plan with a huge discount plus one month free. And you should just go and check out D&D Beyond at via our link, sign up for an account, maybe get a subscription, get all those unlimited character sheets, get access to the combat tracker, get all that cool <laughs> stuff, content sharing. Um, oh, 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 yeah. Uh, just because he's trying to do it to me, so I'm doing it back. Uh, go and check out d, d Beyond and NordVPN, and thank you both very much for sponsoring this episode of High Rollers. Uh, as you can see, as you can tell, I tried to get most of the gunk out of my nose. Um, there's still a little bit there. Uh, I'm going to sound a little bunged up like I got a cold. That's fine. Um, I don't even Sorry. know why. I don't even know Big why. Emotions. Like, I'm not actually sad or like, you know, it's just, I'm just a mess. It's I'm emotional. just a human mess. I'm just a human emotional mess. I really am. It's weird. Ah, but I'm not emotional because I don't amazing, actually care right? about it. <laughs> It's yes, just, you do. I don't know why. Yeah, oh, yeah you I do. Know, it's, it's your weird. world. It's like Mark. acting. It's your world. It's like, it's like unconscious method acting or something. I don't know. I'm just sort of like, I'm really in the moment and now it's real. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. Invest, it's weird. Invested. Investment. Uh, yeah, invest, I guess so. Investment. Inve yeah. 
that. I don't know. It's weird. I very strange. I had an eyelash cool. stuck what in my cool eye. What a cool T-shirt, <laughs> Tom. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Amazing T-shirt though. Amazing yeah, T-shirt and Kim as well. Oh, look at that. Nice T-shirt. Oh, yeah. Nice T-shirt. Yeah, mm. it's pretty good, yeah. huh? Mm-hmm. Pretty good, huh? That's a nice yeah, like T-shirt. It. He's like, oh, don't fucking cry. Good. Shut up. <laughs> Remember when I told oh, you? What about to shut um, <laughs> up? I didn't. I <laughs> forgot for oh, a moment. Man, this, this bit right here on my chest. Oh, it feels good, man. Feels good. Feels real good. Don't good. even ask me anyway. about a date. No, no, I wasn't going to. I was, I was just remarking terrible. what a cool T-shirt. I was just like, what a cool T-shirt they're wearing. I wasn't going to say anything about nice. dates. Really yeah. nice. I got anyway. Long sleeves. You're always ruining. You're ruining my surprises all the time. Hey, <laughs> so many I just, surprises. I can't help it. I'm not ruining um, every surprise. Other things we could ruin. No, yeah. no, no. Don't surprise. even. Right. <laughs> do not even. <laughs> if I do, though, yeah. I will punch you so hard <laughs> if you ruin anything else. Punch you a you. lot. <laughs> yeah. I'm punch you a lot. <laughs> oh. So we come back into it um i think i definitely uh, we'll start with the aurora's crew because obviously you guys have just had a big thing and we'll jump over the call for a bit but yeah um welcome you guys stand <laughs> in these incredible majestic mind-blowing halls just this constant reflection of light that seems to just stretch on you don't see an entrance or an exit um, just this single column of light comes down into the very center of these conjoined corridors atop this crystal sarcophagus. Where Hesper was, there is just this book just laying there. Um, Nova crawls over to the book. I imagine when the magic goes out, everyone just drops. Just like, and she yeah. just... Love that. She crawls over to the book and and just cradles it and is kind of looking around at where Hesper was um, kind of almost in disbelief as to what we've just witnessed mm. um, make a um, make an arcana check for me Nova actually just to see if you okay. could pick up on some stuff sensing 19 plus magic. 7 26 <sighs> judging by what you witnessed the state that Hesper has been in, you know, the, the when you saw him, but also the way that Quills described him and the way that he's been depicted, you get the sense, and, just, you know, this is an analytical thing. You're, like, making assumptions, but they're educated guesses. He was expending huge amounts of divine energy in short spaces of time, doing something. Who knows what? I don't know, but... Whatever this was, this last act, sending out these infinite numbers of himself to find the exact place that Quill is, it took the last vestiges. But you do notice something else. That sarcophagus is glowing brighter than it did before. Hmm. I think Sentry, you would notice that as well. Just that sarcophagus is definitely it's more radiant than before Hesper brought you here I um he's not gone you heard him if we bring Siaska back Hesper comes back too. We must we, do whatever um, we can to bring her back. Quill's going to be real mad. Real mad. Quill's going to be alive, though. And that's the, the main bit. Well, Hesper um, sacrificed himself so we could get him. So You know what? Somebody, a, a, a god, just sacrificed his life to save, to save Quill's life. So that's pretty... I think that's just that's pretty good. That's must feel good to have someone respect you so much to just, you know, sacrifice every last bit of their life to save you. So the barb's important. Gotta get I him. I mean wouldn't we do all that for each other? Absolutely, but 
but I didn't know that the god would, I don't, I'm not, you know, religious, so to me this is... Whoa. Yeah. Hopefully we um, can find more that are on our side, just as much as he was. We can worry about that later. We need to go and get Quill. Um, from what I can gather from this book, it's linked to the Serpent's Coil, but Hesper said, to the outside. You all know what it's like surviving in the Astral Sea, so we need to think about that. Uh, breathing, cold. Um, do we go n now, straight away? Uh, I mean, how are we feeling? How, 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 how is everybody? How many hours have I'm passed? I'm good to go anytime you guys want to go. Girl. I will say one thing I hadn't considered is being the god of magic and this amount of divine energy. I think you would all gain the benefit of a long rest from that amount of oh, energy being sweet. expended. Excellent. Long rest. Good god. Do I also get a new shot Problem of solved. Tiangong, you know? No. Like all that no. I um, gave you a really cool book. <laughs> no, don't be greedy. <laughs> no, you did give me a really cool book, and I appreciate that. It is a very cool book. Do I need to attune to this book? Uh, you do. And the other thing I would say Nova recognizes is it's not set for the material plane. It's not set for Erois either. It only has the yeah, one set I was gonna, gemstone. I was going to say, actually, like before we go, uh, one thing I want to do is spend an action to attune a gemstone to the current plane. Because I think it would be nice if we could come back here, yes? It's not even the current plane. Oh. It's this specific location. So you attune it oh. to the Halls of Infinite Resplendence. Oh. Well, that was well, a good move. This is our house now. <laughs> this is, we're coming back here. This is our so house our now. This house is our house now. Secret our area. secret, secret base. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody talk about this one. <laughs> yeah, so uh, two gemstones delicious. are now lit. And Nova, you can, you, can, you can just, holding the book and being attuned to it, we'll say that you attune to it. Um, you know, you've got to figure out how that's going to work, but yeah. It's with two gemstones, you know exactly where they're located. So you know one is the Astral Sea, uh, and you know it's, you know, some vague location. Um, but it will you know where it will take you, and then this one is set to this okay. the the yeah. <laughs> Siaska's tomb yeah. in the Halls of Infinite Resplendence. Uh just in terms of admin, I'm going to unattune from the rod um of alertness. Mm -hmm. Um so if anyone wants to use that, you're more than welcome. You've got a bunch um, of I've used the main charge on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've used the main charge in it, but you can use detect good and evil, detect magic, detect poison and disease and see invisibility with it if you want. We can Fold do that up. after. We'll, we'll do that on the next episode or we like can, have people yeah. offline yeah, yeah. go through items and stuff. Yeah. Because there's also like you've got like the ring of evasion, the, the ring. Of teleportation as well. Like you've got a bunch of stuff. So yeah. um, I cool. think uh, this whole situation after being dropped out of the sky, Lucius hasn't said a single word. He's in complete. Yeah. Uh, stunned disbelief and all he's going to do is slowly pick himself up and look at the sarcophagus in front of him so yeah Lucius the first one kind of walks past Nova who went to where the book was but Lucius walks past and you get to the sarcophagus and it's this almost just like a chunk of crystal right like it's just carved or not even carved formed naturally like some sort of crystal that's grown and there's this intense light and it's bright lucius like it, it's you know do you want to try and look inside like this is very bright no um, this is too try. much uh right now he's just almost can't believe he's here what just happened uh he's overwhelmed that he's even in this situation surrounded by the people he's surrounded by involved in it in any way uh a god sacrificing himself or uh a, fr a dear friend of his, like he's in and over his head right now, so he's very much locked off. Okay. So yeah, you're just like... not even realizing it. Yeah, just don't even look in. You're just sort of stood in front of this this sarcophagus, this this crystal tomb. Sentry. As, yeah, as Lucius um like walks over, can I like put a hand on his shoulder and just quietly just thank him for for helping? Mm -hmm. We did everything we could it's for quill right it's, it's of course without your help you help me 
I don't know, I, I don't think we would have been able to do it without you helping. So thank you. Well, like you said, all is one. Till the one. Century, I mean, you're stood in front of this this crystal tomb. Do you try and look inside? It's you can you can do it. The light's blinding, but you could if you as an you know force yourself to look inside if you wanted to, or you could not. I think just out of because it looks like a coffin. I just think out of respect, she wouldn't like sure. she she probably yeah, she just, would maybe like, like it's just filled with light. If you don't try, I think and she would look like just it. place a hand on it, but not try and like draw too much mm. attention to it place a hand on it though eh you touch it the crystal and it's warm but also cold it's like there's a presence within it that's warm and loving and caring there's also a coldness to it like an empty expanse not in a bad way not in a scary way like like the feeling of possibility. But there's sadness. There's deep sadness too. There's a grief here. There's uh, a guilt. There's a mourning. There's heartbreak. Sentry would just say thank you. Like knowing it's got brighter after Hesper mm. like passed. I think mm. knowing that she would just yeah just quietly just say thank you mm. it doesn't there's no response the feelings don't change but they're there cool well what next team um i i have a scroll of water breathing um but i don't know if that would apply to astral space um it um don't think I so try anyway. i think we just have to try and get inside as quickly as possible which we don't really know I, what it looks like so if it had if it has windows i could create a portal so we could portal in through the windows it's just Obviously, we don't know where on the ship and what kind of ship it is, if it has windows. Um, that's my concern. The other way is to find some kind of launch bay, uh, hatch that we can get through. Uh, yeah, that's my ideas. While you guys deal with this, let's jump to the man himself. After about an hour, Quill, the pressure says you know, goes. You feel yourself like, <laughs> oh, like you can breathe easily. The weight's lifted off your shoulders and everything again. Um, but you see the the full plate wearing guard is now going to be watching where you are. Uh, let me just throw down like any old random token so you know where they are. Uh, they sure. basically position themselves on the wall opposite your cell, cross their arms. You can see that they've got like a... Uh, kind of heavy glaive um look kind of like they're holding in fact they're leaning on like a bladed staff and they're just looking into the cell gotta ask do i feel any different no okay why would you well you know just wondering just wondering <laughs> What's the plan? Are you gonna watch me for another, what, eight hours? I've got about seven hours before Mistress Akira is ready, but don't worry. The intelligence officer will be along shorter than that. I'm just watching you till then. He'll probably leave you a <laughs> jelly-brained fool after he's done with you. Oh, great. Is uh, this what you wanted to do with your life? Serving Zarkira? I'm not here to debate my life choices with you, Erosian. I know exactly why I serve the mistress. Just doesn't say anything. 
You see right. at the corner of your eye, you see these Durgar who have been working on this like panel. It looks like they're doing like some hefty repairs to it. They're beginning to like pack up some things, but they're just kind of lingering around and like listening to this conversation. And they're just like making faces at each other. Uh, the woman just kind of like tuts and like doesn't quite spit, but like makes like the gesture of like, like as this guy's talking. I mean, <laughs> I I I am at a loss of what can be done. Like, I can just talk to this guy and just be like, "Hey, your choices suck, and you suck." <laughs> you definitely do that, and he just doesn't respond. He, you know, he'll just not engage. Um, he's too disciplined as a soldier to really get baited into a you know debate on morality and things like that. I will start to pray <laughs> and okay. just hope to Hesper, obviously, uh, and just hope there's some way I can find some time to get a message out to find my friends and allies for them to find me. Okay. All right. In that case, That's we'll all just I got. jump back. That's all you got. <laughs> We'll jump back to the others for now. Um, okay, team, you know what you want to do? This... Smash our way in. I don't know. That's my plan. <laughs> I don't really have another pretty, plan. Pretty good so, plan. Yeah. That's Ayla's Just plan. In. We do Smash need to try and be stealthy. If this is Sarkira's flagship and she's just captured Quill, I think she's going to be there, right? She's going to be wanting to be there. So yes. we do need to be careful, at mm. least until we get Quill. Then you can start smashing. Okay, uh, you just let me know when. We may have the element of surprise, considering a god sacrificed themselves to give us a power which no mortal should possess. So the expectancy, the expectancy of us arriving outside the ship and infiltrating, that puts us at a slight advantage. Don't know where we're going to end up, of course. But let's make the most of it. So my plan is we shift there. Hopefully there's a window, and if there is, I'll cast Arcane Gate and get us through into the ship. And then I can cast invisibility on all of us. We find Quill and we get out. Um, there are other spells in this book that I can p p pinpoint his exact location. Um, so if we could find a quiet corner, um, I, can, I can cast these spells to pinpoint him. Uh, the main thing is just surviving in astral space when we get there. Question for Mark Humes. <laughs> yes. Now this is okay. going a bit out there. Okay. But wall of ice, right? I can make a dome. Yep. Technically ice is water and got oxygen particles in it, right? So placing us in a dome and us just being really close to the ice will provide a level of oxygen. Uh... Yeah, it'd be like a bathosphere. So, because this isn't space, this is astral sea, remember? There's no pressure. It's not like space where, like, things will implode. It's really just there's no air and it's intensely cold. I would say if you could basically... You'd have to wait until you the second you arrive, but you could hold the spell and then craft the dome around you. It may hamper your vision a little bit and you wouldn't have any control of where it goes. But in theory, yes, there would be oxygen inside it um, that you could breathe. And also it would give you some protection from the cold because the air, you know, you'd, you'd like basically... Like Kind so. of, yeah. I, I, I would argue that you'd be creating like a magically created um, like atmosphere within it that wouldn't be harmful anymore. So um, I was, but I was, you would have no control of where right. the dome goes okay. and it would be hard to see through because it's ice. You'd have to like, you know, find a way to look through it. Well, my plan uh, as Lucius would be if we teleport and we see the vessel and I know Lova's looking for a window, I'd cast the dome onto the ship itself, encasing us 
in a dome where oh, the floor is essentially the side of the ship. Gotcha. So we are okay, but you're going to wait until you can actually see like an entry point. Until like I find set. a yeah, so we'd wait for okay. that moment essentially. Oh, interesting. Okay, sure. Why don't we? I mean, yeah, you can try it and see what happens. <laughs> can only try. We have. You can only try. We've been in Astros. The point of the game. We we walked along the back of the serpent before. Yeah. Yeah. That was a little different. The serpent, yeah, like there was no. The serpent was so massive, and it magically kind of created atmosphere around it. Um, it was like being on like a like a small planet almost because it was massive, uh, um, but it was still freezing cold. Like you were taking cold damage every second yeah. you were out there, and you can like. And the other thing is, you guys can take a big breath and then transport there. There's no air there. <laughs> it, 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 there's no air to breathe in the atmosphere. Only Nova would survive. Yeah, because yeah, she could. Well, I mean, century you could hold spot. your breath. Like Ayla can and hold century, a breath, yeah. and Sentry, I can yeah, hold Sentry a breath. doesn't need it. Ayla can hold her breath for like 10 fucking minutes or something ridiculous. It's just Lucius, you can't hold it for that long. I think you can do like a two minutes or something. If I remember looking at your stats. Yeah, my you like two minutes plus there. one. So. Yeah, so you have two minutes of air basically um, if Lucius holds his breath. Um, okay. I'll try this dome technique uh, and I'll relay that to the rest of the team. Sure. It's the best I can think no, of. I love it. Very creative. Okay. Uh, the other thing as well Let's is, um, depending on where you arrive, if you're just float, like the astral sea is, there is no gravity as well. So like you need to be able to either fly or give yourself some sort of propulsion to get around. Um, that's the other thing. Oh wow! Um, but I, I know that you have spells and yeah, you have I like can cast fly. <laughs> yeah, you, Lucius can you cast fly. And you've you've got hammer, options. So can I? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I so I, that's why I wasn't too worried about it because I know you have options so if I do it fifth cool. level I can do everybody okay all right well Nova you've got the book everyone ready yes ready okay let's go get the bird <sighs> probably don't need to but I feel really good if we could all just hold hands you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, like, yeah. I think you have yeah, to, actually, for plane shift. I think you physically have to be in contact with each other. Oh. Uh, link hands in you, a circle. Actually, yeah. You do have, you do, you, you have hands? to hold hands. Okay. Okay. Amazing. Just gonna slide my hand. It's a little bit sticky, but there we go. Um, deep breath and activate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you kind of hold it in one hand and then you bring your other one, you know, holding Lucius's hand and touch the gemstone, I'm assuming, Nova. Uh, this is probably a dark green gemstone. And then one the, the one for Rois is gold, um, if you want to get specific. Um, you all... This doesn't feel like the teleportation that you've held before. Whereas before you feel like your spirit, like you're, you've been pulled out of your body and sent somewhere fast. This time, you are surrounded by prismatic light like all different shades and shimmering with this kind of material like these winds it's almost like you're lifted up by this gust of wind and you are surrounded by a cylinder of shifting colorful magical light and you are pulled up and you accelerate rapidly you blast through the cradle across the astral sea faster than you can possibly imagine all holding hands and then eventually it comes to a stop holding your breath like forcing yourself to remember to hold your breath and not try and breathe there's no sound you just float next to a long black crystalline vessel you can see lines of purple energy running through it you can see like arcane turrets protruding from it at certain angles um you can see that there are these kind of like shifted sections that seem more see-through than others um but where you arrive you can see that one section in particular is almost like a wall of force. You see that it's just completely open and there is a shimmering field of magic that seems to lead into some sort of you know, craft bay. You can see that there is a kind of like astral ship inside it. It almost looks like a, a little docking bay, almost like for a fighter or some sort of vessel. Uh, it's maybe larger than a normal fighting vessel. It looks like almost like a, a, a smaller battleship. Um, and you can, it seems that Hesper anticipated that you would need a way in and gave you an opportunity to at least see some point, but you are floating. So 
you'll need some way to get closer to it if you want to kind of anchor yourself to the ship or anything like that. I will cast fly on everybody. Everybody gains the ability to just control your movement in the Astral Sea. Uh, as a point, everybody takes five cold damage as soon as you arrive. Everybody takes that. You take five cold damage every six seconds, and it's going to take you probably at least two, three rounds to get to the Astral, the actual Astral Ship. Yes, Lucius. I've got defensive dichromancy. Yes. If I cast a load of level one or even frostbite as a cantrip yep. and uh, use that multiple times and I give everybody resistance I can't remember for right now I'm going to say yes I will look into this and check you I can't are a creature exactly within 30 feet of you gain resistance when I use my dichromancy feature to the same damage type until the end of my next ah. turn so you wouldn't be able to do it with a cantrip because dichromancy oh, doesn't yeah. trigger so on a cantrip. Level it has to be one. on a level higher. The other one as well is that you'd have to do this one per round. So like you'd have to be like, right, Nova gets it this turn, which means that she takes, but everybody else takes five damage. And then the next turn, I'll do it for the next person and the next person and the next person and the next right. person. Right. So what um, I'll do is cast Armor of Agathis on myself, which would give me okay. temporary hit points to kind of mitigate that. Yep. Give someone and that resistance. gives you five resistance who are you going to give it to uh i'd give it to nova being technically okay. the least hp so everybody takes another five cold damage you take half nova so you take two um that's the the second round third round do you want to try and do it again lucius or does anybody else want to try and do something can we just try i think just move towards it just go as quick as we can just yeah. move yeah to minimize the okay. amount of rounds that we're outside. Okay. Uh, how long does the resistance last, Lucius? Is it until the start End of the, of the next, next round? Turn. Is it? So it's like, okay, so we've got to keep moving so while we're doing this. So you take another five cold damage, everybody. You take two Nova. And then at that point, you are basically up next to the, not quite the back of the ship. It's like a side section of it. Um, but the, there is a wall, like there's, it's a physical wall of force. Like you can't pass through it. it it's like, you know, like a barrier um so you kind of bump against it um, what do you guys want to do you got like a turn and then you're going to take more damage so is there something that i can anchor the portal onto like the side of the yeah, ship you could do it on the side um, of the ship then, yeah yeah that's a solid surface yeah so i'll i'll start casting i'll use tiangong to carve into almost like the air and create a portal and then connect it to a second portal inside but the little cargo dock. away yeah Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, there's nobody inside. You look inside. There's nobody actually in this dock as well. Like it seems to be, uh, you know, empty. It doesn't seem to be being used. Um, and yeah, you carve like this port, this orange portal, uh, and you can all step inside without taking any further damage. You emerge on the inside of the ship through the arcane gate, and you are now successfully aboard the Serpent's Coil. Oh, yeah. Okay. I want this one. And then let's. And then we need the dome. Down. <laughs> you did not. Thank you, Hesper. It was a good idea, though. No, no, not. Quill. It was a good He's backup plan. I had no. a vision of us just like appearing on the side of just the ship and being like, "Crap!" <laughs> or just <laughs> even in the engine. Ima imagine if we just appeared in the exhaust. Uh, anyway. Um. <laughs> so. This is not quite to scale this room just because of the way the map was. This is much larger, this this thing, but you, the same entrances and exits are there. So you can see on the far side, there is like a pair of double doors that seem to lead further in. But to the south side, there also appears to be a singular uh, doorway. This does not appear to have any guards in it. Um, you do hear the sounds of somebody moving around, but there's all sorts of crates and walkways and things like that. And Nova specifically said she was going to tuck the portal away. So you kind of emerge behind like a bunch of these like storage crates and things like that. Um, you can hear that there is people moving around, but it does not. You didn't spot any guards when you were looking in. Uh, what do you guys want to do? Can, oh, no. um, can, yeah, go on. Can I cast um, Locate Creature? Okay, yeah. So, uh, read out. What's yeah. the spell do? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, describe a name or creature that's familiar to you. You sense a direction to the creature's location. As long as the creature is in a thousand feet of you, if the creature is moving, you know the direction of the movement. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. If it's under the polymorph spell, it doesn't locate the creature. 
Okay. Uh, and this is through the this is through the you know it's a paladin spell right so it's coming through the matrix mm. so you kind of almost almost rec- you know like there's a guardian spirit that lends you its sort of like tracking ability and you kind of uh, let that energy kind of leak out and it forms this very delicate golden line that leads to the singular southern door and goes through it okay I'll relay that to the team so he's okay uh I've cast a spell to locate Quill. He should be through that south door. And only okay. Sentry see that. Only Sentry sees the line, yes. Okay, good. The spell. Imagine it just, like, going between guards. People like, <laughs> <laughs> here, what's this like, golden hmm, root doing that? here? Who put this golden root? <laughs> Bob, Fantastic. is that you? Um, yeah. Work, Sentry. Uh, let me let me cast invisibility on everyone, and then at least we can be concealed. Although, yes. Sarkira's ship, who knows what security measures she has, so be aware that it might not be completely 100% invisible invis- proof. Yeah, okay. Um, casting invisibility on everyone. Um, okay. No, it's not normal. I can cast it normal. on four people. Perfect. I know it's not normal, but we are still able to fly, so it may be beneficial to stay on the ceiling right now. I mean, well, not even on the ceiling. You could hover just above the ground so you don't... Yes, I I think invisible and hovering above the floor. Yeah, you just won't make any noise, right? Like, yeah, 100%. Nice. We finally did it! What episode are we on? Yeah, that's really good. She's silent! (laughs) Okay, so (laughs) you guys are currently in this, 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 this docking bay. We'll call it that because that's basically what it is. I can't think of a fantasy equivalent um, of this Magitech, you know, astral ship. You can hear that there's people moving around. You are all invisible. You're all flying. You're not touching the ground. You've got this rope. What do you guys just begin to follow it? Yeah. Also, are you guys communicating? Are you messengering? I was going to say, how are you communicating? Yeah. I'm messengering. Wait, and Quill hear us if we were. Well, oh, no, yeah. he's, they've probably taken it. Haven't they? <gasps> they that's what I did. Oh. I would have definitely tried it. It's like, Quill, can you? Okay, let's get our bird back. Okay. This is very interesting. You have a combination of spells here that makes it very hard for me to detect you and no real reason for me to call for stealth checks because you are flying, you can't be seen, so unless something can see invisible (laughs) creatures, Mm. which maybe some things can, there's nothing there. The first (laughs) obstacle, however, is as you make your way to the door, the door is shut and it does not open like it's one of these kind of magitech doors that slides open you see a control panel there seems to be some sort of like panel um but it doesn't open do you want to try ayla does it react can i try and see because things have reacted to me before Mm, it has this one doesn't ah zakir in it wrong baddie before it Damn. Yeah, this it does seem to be that she has tailored this ship's security systems for her forces, not Valkyrian forces. Uh, hmm. Can I go over to the um, control panel? A little panel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you want to just try and like Harry Potter, kind of? Just to beep, 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 beep. of secrets by speaking parcel tongue. Can we speak parcel tongue <laughs> at the door? Can you speak <laughs> sna- snake? Can you speak snake? Snaky tongue? No. Sure, Snake why not? Tongue. Snake tongue. No. no. Um, but can I just look at it before I even start touching it? Like, you know, what is it? Does it look similar to Valkyrian stuff or is it definitely like yes, a Zarkyrian? It, it's it's the same make, it just looks like, and I guess like Nova being a Magitek, you know, having learned about Magitek, like you get the sensation that this is a Valkyrian ship that Zarkira has tailored to her needs. She's overwritten certain like security, like the, the wards that would control who can go in and out. She's tweaked so that only her forces are allowed through and things like that um very similar to other systems these doors can be opened either by some sort of creature holding some sort of key or uh, by specific individuals um it does detect those individuals based on just appearance though so like it you know if if somebody it it seems to like almost like a facial scan right like it's like yep that's that person and then they they get let through well nova Uh, so similar to the facility, we're going to need key cards or it recognizes facial scans. Now, I can change my face 
but it would need to be someone on this ship. I, I could look like some of the guards we've met maybe down on Oroas, but I, I have no guarantee that it's long, uh, recognized by this ship. Who do you think would have ultimate clearance of this ship, Nova? Zakira. Uh, Starbane? Uh, Star- Va- Vala? Uh, Ma- uh, look like oh! Zakira, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> the big Z! But yeah. You're invisible. X, actually. She can X. end the invisibility on herself. I can mm. end it on myself. Um, the only thing is, it is a concentration spell, so I, it would drop invisibility uh, on everyone. Mm. Well, there may be other ways through, through it. the door. Uh, we could try brute force. <laughs> We've got a. That would drink. That will also drop my invisibility. Us. While you guys ponder the door puzzle, Quill, the guard waits while you pray, and then another figure appears. Zoop. Let's walk back over to this. You've seen these creatures before, and it does not bring you any ease when you see this thing making their way towards you. Mm-hmm. They enter through the doors behind the Durgar, their large, bulbous, purple head and tentacled mouth uh, kind of making strange, undulating gestures as some sort of communication happens between the guard and this creature. Uh, It makes its way over towards you and sort of peers in through the wall. Oh... (laughs) I see that my latest guest is here. Just a moment, my dear fellow. I have some questions for you. Please. Oh, good. Come with me. Uh, uh, The guard moves up and taps the side of the wall and the barrier comes down and he steps in. Mm. On your feet. Let's move. Okay. Oh man, but the barrier's down though, right? <laughs> the barrier is down. I saw the thing on. Yeah. Thank you. It is. <laughs> it is God. You're right. <laughs> hey, look. <laughs> <laughs> barrier's down. And I have. I can cast spells while I'm using in these shackles. You said. I would say you can use somatic and verbal components. Yes. I just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to try it because I know they don't want to kill me. Okay. I want to. <laughs> oh, this is so dangerous. I want to cast. Do? I want to cast Thunder Wave. And I want to okay. blast them away from me, and then I want to make a break for it. Like I, I, I sure. need to do something. As far sure. as Quill is concerned. What's the saving throw like this? So, okay, two things that happened. Both the guard and the mind flayer had readied actions, uh, but the spell goes off. The spell still goes off, but both guard and mind flayer had readied actions. Okay, uh, well, they need to make a constitution save. I'm casting this at uh, fourth level again, uh, but they need to make a con 15 save. And I'm going to say that okay. the guard rolls a two. Yes. Okay, yeah. Well, that's funny because the guard definitely did roll a two on my <laughs> advantage saving throw. <laughs> I, rolled, I rolled a one and a two. Uh, <laughs> so you make his one a two. However, he goes flying. So how much damage does the guard take? Let me... Uh, at me fourth level, saying. he would take... What is this? Uh, one, two, three, four, five D8 damage. Okay. Uh, which is a stonken. 26... 26 points of damage. Okay. The guard... And then his lord... Uh, wait, it's funny. So the Thunder Wave pushes him back against the walls of the uh, 
the the wall opposite him where opposite your cell you hear him like thud against it and his ready thing was to make an attack so actually pushing him away stops his ready action going off he was gonna basically come forward with this glaive and you see it beginning to crackle with lightning like he was gonna try and like hit you with this like you know stun baton thing um but he gets thrown up against the wall and bam slams down uh he's still conscious but you do hear him take a hefty hit the mind yep. flayer some sort of psychic energy erupts out from it. I need you to make an intelligence saving throw, please. Oh, God. Uh, plus two. Uh, oh, natural one. <laughs> you, Mr. Keelek, take 22 psychic damage and you are stunned. Um, oh. You're stunned oh. long enough. Before you even get a saving throw, it's long enough for the guard to come up, uh, like kind of pull himself free, run up, grab your hands, yank them behind your back, put like his arm over your mouth and get you in like a, in a choke hold as you're just sort of reeling from this stunned effect. Um, oh as you God. just... Okay. Uh, it was worth a try. It was worth a it try. It was definitely worth a try. Well, well, it seems that someone still has some fight in them. Ah, oh, we'll soon deal with that, my boy. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm struggling. I'm kicking. I'm struggling and kicking. Yes. I'm kicking and struggling. You can make a strength check. You can make a strength check. Uh, disadvantage. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm stunned as well. Yeah, that's a disadvantage. Yeah, I mean, the uh, stunned lasts for a minute. You can have to make saving throws, but we'll assume that after a while, like, unless you want to roll a ton of saving throws... Uh, intelligent saving throws. Uh, 14 and a 15 on strength, so actually not yep. bad, but... Not bad, but not enough, unfortunately. This guard <laughs> no, is still much stronger. Um, okay, that's cool. Yep. Uh, they take you not too far, uh, in fact, actually. You are taken out of your cell. You are led up uh, slightly around the corner where the guard... My goodness, I need to turn on hardware acceleration. My roll 20 is struggling. Uh, they take you up to another door which slides open into a circular chamber where a single chair is at the center. Uh, the guard shuts the door uh, behind you where the mind flare joins you. You are placed in the chair uh, which has straps. Your arms are like strapped down. Um, whilst you are still reeling from the stun and like, you know, you're forced down, um, you can no longer cast somatic components. Um, your, your, your mouth is left, you know, you can, you know, any, any verbal only spells you could cast, but the mind flayer just kind of steeples his extra long fingers in front of you, uh, and just looks. Now, I hope that that unpleasantness has, uh, gotten out of your system. I need to... No thing. Oh. Oh, God. Show me your secrets. Oh, but I've got so many. Wisdom <laughs> many. saving throw, please. Wisdom saving throw. Oh, Illithid, mm -hmm. you picked the wrong burp. Well, Where here's old? the thing is he can do this uh, 10 times. You have to make the saving throw. <laughs> I've got a plus 10. So 21 yeah. on the first one. 21. Wait, I have to get, I do this another. 10, yeah, nine times. Okay, well, the next one. Stop resisting. I wish to know. Keep going. 16. Uh, the next Your one. Your mind. What is this power that keeps it so strong? 24. Ah. The whole time, this is like, you feel like something wriggling in your brain, trying to like jab into your mind to pull your memories. You know it can read your surface thoughts, your immediate thoughts, but it's trying to dig into your memories. It's trying to learn everything it can. Oh. 13, 13 so far. The 13. So what was that? My Number seventh seven? Roll. Oh, Your yeah. Seventh roll. Yes. Yes. Reveal to me. I see. See much. I see the leaders crumbling allies. I see. Vala. Rescue. The Tassadar. Oh, no. Sequences. Make another wisdom saving throw. Make uh, three uh, more wisdom saving throws. Okay. You need so to maintain eight, this. 
Natural 20. Um, no, no, do not resist. Yield your secrets to me. 18 and the final roll. No, a one. No. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. The whole Palador guidance plans. I see. I see. Callus, the world engine. You have seen things that you could not see. Things that have yet to pass. Callus's plan failed. Hadar. Hadar wins. <sighs> the Where creature now? stumbles back. The creature stumbles back. I must. Your master can't win. I must tell Not against Hadar. Zakira. I must tell Zakira of this. You think. You think too small, little bird. Callus is not my master. And Zakira, she is cunning. If there is no hope for Callus, then her allegiance must go elsewhere. And he oh. leaves. Oh, no. Oh, I just fractured Me? them. Meanwhile, infiltration team. How do you want to get past this door? Okay, new plan. This is taking too long. Um, I'm going to disguise myself as Zarkira. You are my prisoners. Uh, Let's go. Uh, I don't know if that's going to work, Nova. I think that the invisible thing is probably uh, We're flying better invisible. idea overall. Let's just get through this door and find Will. Quietly. <laughs> Can I use my flame lance like a uh, f like a torch? That's not quietly. Like, try and like. <laughs> so that will unfortunately break the it invisibility because it's on an attack mm -hmm. or anything like that. And it is an attack. Okay. Um, you you think you could do it? You think that this is this crystalline kind of? It's actually no. It's a metal door. You probably could do it, but it would reveal you. You can hear people stomping around. There seems to be like a catwalk above. You can hear kind of like footsteps stomping around upstairs. Um, what's the plan? It's probably you more... try and grab one of their passes. Sneaky like. I mean, you still need to get through this door. There's no one in this room where we are. There's people Is there? Yeah, I said that there's walkways above yeah. and you can hear somebody moving okay. around above. In which case... That's what I said. Go for it. Stealthy, Me? stealthy. If you want to... It would be a Fly sleight of hand check with advantage if you want to try and like lift, like pick their pockets, basically. So if you, if you fly out and look up... <laughs> There is, there are Durgar. There are Durgar-like engineers who are, they seem to be kind of like working on like the structure and just repairing things can and I, cleaning things and things like that. Yes? Can I use a cantrip while concentrating? I know this is a question if I If it's a concentration it, spell, but... it, it depends. The, the cantrip will say whether it's a concentration or not. If it's not, then no. Uh, no. Mage hand. If, I was thinking yeah, of mage handing mage hand. and pick... Yeah. In I would case, say I fly you... To somewhere? Yeah, you can use the mage hand. Still give me a sleight of hand check, but do it with advantage, and I'll give you a bonus for using the mage hand. Uh, a hidden bonus. Okay, I got a plus three to this. So yeah. It's not an attack. Normally, uh, invisibility is like it breaks on casting a spell, but I think I'm going to say this is mage hand. You're not, at, you know, you're trying to pick a pocket here. I'm not going to make the invisibility break. 17 and 14 plus 3, so 20, unnatural 20 is my highest. Okay, with the mage hand, with Tiangong kind of controlling the mage hand, you see that one of these Durgar maybe looks like uh, he seems to be giving orders to these other workers, um, definitely has one of these keystones. You've seen them before. This one's on like a, a, a chain uh, attached to like something, but you kind of using that, you kind of lift it up and you can hook it off of the belt, uh, this kind of like long chain uh, with this stone and kind of float it down. Uh, and grab uh, the mage hand. And he doesn't seem to notice. Doesn't seem to notice that it's been taken. Uh, this just has the... Uh, this doesn't have an elvish rune. This is a rune you don't recognize. Um, oh, wait. Can you Have you still got eyes of the rune keeper? Or the, the uh, one no, which I lets you read but... stuff? Okay. So you, you don't understand uh, what this rune yeah. is. No. Yeah. I would if I have comprehend languages, but that's a ritual. And mm -hmm. I'm a bit pressed yeah. for time right now. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Let's go through the door. Okay. 
with that, you guys make your way through this door and it leads once again into another sort of corridor leading down. The door opens. It does open with a slight metal scraping. You hope that nobody will hear that uh, as this kind of, you know, uh, you float through invisibly, not touching the ground, no need for stealth checks. You emerge into a circular corridor. There seems to be a door to the south, uh, a door to the right, um, and uh, and then an open hallway uh, leading to the, sorry, open hallway to the right, closed door to the left, and then another door leading south. Sentry? Uh, the cord, uh, sorry, Sentry's cord heads to the open corridor. Uh, leading to the right. Okay, I'll yeah, I'll tell the team the. Uh, okay, it looks like Quill's in this direction, and I'll yeah start leading them down the open corridor. Okay, let's Here's stay in wait. messenger ring and hold on to somebody so we stay together. Okay, okay let's yep. move through this section. I'm drop you guys into a new map. Oh. Oh, I didn't do the lighting on this one. That's my fault. Never mind. It's okay, because pretty much nothing's going to detect you here anyway. Uh, in Illusion Nova. So this one leads you to a T-junction. You can see more of these like dim red lights kind of stretching off in either direction. You Do you hear any creatures nearby? Let me roll and see if we get a random encounter. Uh, we do not. The cord leads you to the north, uh, moving your way through the corridors. This one seems to lead to a section with just this large pit. Uh, it seems to just descend into the bowels of the crystalline ship. Um, on the other side of it, you can see more corridors leading off. Y'all have seen Star Wars, you know what this kind of looks like. But the cord continues leading. Um, it's taken you kind of down. You feel like there's been some slight sloping to these corridors that's led you a bit further down. Uh, leading around, you are all brought through the corridor and into a section of cells. It is at this point that the corridor, the um, the golden rope seems to lead through and I can now put you guys on this map. Oh, you prepared so many maps. I did. <laughs> there was so much to get through. Yes, there was. Line of viz. <laughs> It's, you guys, and locate smart, creature, yeah. Smart plan. And locate um, creature. The, the cord goes to through a door where a guard in this kind of full black armor is currently stood outside, um, just arms folded. Um, as you enter, you all hear a voice in your head. Um, I don't know who you are. How have you arrived here? You are not Zarkiran yeah. forces. Who are you? Who are you? My name is Ranael. I'm, I'm a prisoner here. Are you... Do you know the one called Quill? Yes. Where's the bird? We're here for the bird. I do not... I do not know exactly. I, I can only sense minds. He is nearby. Uh, either in his cell or... It is possible that one of the Illithids has taken him into the interrogation chamber. Let's move. We can't trust any strange voices right now. I mean you no harm. I am a prisoner here. If there is kindness in your hearts, both myself and another are kept here. We have been experimented on by Zarkira. I will gladly aid you if you can release us. Where are you located? I do not... I can sense that you have entered, though I do not know which from. One of the northern cells. Right. We'll get our friend and do what we can. No promises. I understand. If you can save Quill from whatever fate awaits him, I am glad for that, if nothing else. He seems a good soul. Yes. Uh, you see the rope leading through the door, but there is a guard in front of it. <laughs> need to distract this one. Do we have anything we can throw down the corridor, perhaps the other side? Throw your coin. <laughs> sure. Okay, I'll do that. I love Get that. Get out of yeah. my inventory. <laughs> Nobody ever That's speaks to me again. That's what the coin is used for. 
yeah, distraction, like Hitman. Um, I love it. I might just never use it. Purely yeah, to annoy I the love crap it. out of people. Just anyway. So, um, anyway. Um, oh, uh, I'm sure we've got some Mage Hand that we maybe can knock on mm. like a, the side to make a noise. Like, is Mage Hand strong enough for that? Um, I can manipulate an object. That's you could it do. It's only 30 Can feet range. Retrieve. Okay. It's only 30 it'd not be very far. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say in my head, prisoner, you can reach out to us. Can you reach out to this guard? Get them away from the door. I can. They have become prone to ignoring me. But I can try. Are you, are you, do you believe that you know where Quill is or, or do you believe yourself to be in position? I, I do not know which door of you speak. I, I can only sense minds. I, I cannot see you. We know where he is. Then allow me to buy you at least a distraction. You wait for a moment and then you hear the sounds of somebody casting a spell and an alarm goes off. Only a short alarm, like a quick sort of like whoop whoop. The guard kind of uh, gets up, moves directly across uh, and seems to stand in front of the cell near to you. Um, and you hear, Can't believe you're causing trouble, Rana. Thought you'd had enough of this punishment by now. What were you even trying to do? And you hear like him press a few crystals and buttons and you just hear like a ah, sh- 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 like you hear like a woman's cry of pain but it pulls him away from the door ah let's not waste this come on through the door let's keep moving that poor i didn't okay. know the 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 this the keystone you have won't open this door but i mean it's a door it's another metal door what do you guys want to do you got like six seconds. We're gonna have to take that guard out or take the key from them. Uh, mage hand again? If I try mage hand again? Uh, try while he's pressing those buttons. I'll try mage hand again then. Um. Okay, you need to go up and like sort of peer around the corner. Yeah. Uh, Nova. Um, as you do so, you can see he's kind of stood on the very edge of this kind of uh, prison cell. And he's looking in, and you catch a glimpse of the figure that he's currently uh, watching suffer. Um, they appear to be... I mean, there's no way of saying... Like, they very look very similar to the figures you met when you met the, the Wings of Ishtar. This is clearly an angel. This is a celestial. But her wings have been surgically removed from her back. You can see like scars, like she's not wearing, she literally has like a loincloth on, that's it. Uh, her wings have been surgically removed and a metal plate has been bolted across her eyes and then like <laughs> seared into her flesh, like completely oh covering her eyes. Um, and she's like, <laughs> she's like coughing and choking as like she's, you know, on the floor of this thing. The guard is kind of just watching her um, as, as you see that. Quick, our that Hadar, that first Hadar creature that we fought that had that mask and then Goliath, Goliath, that the no, had, no, the one that killed no, the woman that wasn't it, that was like a mask that was okay. like a very ornate, beautiful right. like face mask almost, and then she lifted it up and had a big hole in her okay. face. Okay, um, right. ignore yeah. me then. No, this is like, you know, she's got beautiful pale blue hair. It's been cut short. Um, so, you know, it looks like it would have once been this luxurious long blue hair, but it, it's now cut short. You can see she's just like scarred. She looks like she's been cut and experimented on. Um, but yeah, she just looks like she's basically, Zarkira has done awful things to her, basically. Um, uh, but yeah, you kind of go over with the mage hand. Give me another sleight of hand check, Nova. Uh, advantage or? Yeah. yeah, advantage. This guy doesn't know you're uh... there. Okay. Uh, 16 was my highest, plus 3, so 19. Okay. You 
the guard seems to like almost almost feel something is like kind of like looking around hasn't spotted you or the mage hand but definitely is alerted you don't quite manage to to grab the thing off of him as you're doing this the door leading into the room that you were trying to get behind opens and a mind flayer stumbles out looking as shocked as a mind flayer can it almost like stumbles out looking around frantically uh and then is going to go and move past you guys what do you do? I'm gonna move to the side. Yeah, move. She just like fly up yeah, and like press yourself know. to the side. Yeah, this thing just walks past you muttering, like, no, it wouldn't mutter to itself, it speaks in telepathy. But yeah, it's just kind of like, almost looks shocked as it like stumbles away um, and then makes its way to the wherever it's open? going. Uh, the door is gonna close. They're automatic, unless somebody like Ayla and Lucius, you pushed yourselves to the side. But Sentry, you've got a chance here if you want to do something yeah, with I'll that about that door. And, I'll dive in and hold Just it up. Like, yeah. yeah. So like this invisible Sentry, the door kind of goes to shut, and Sentry, you're holding it up. Um, what's your strength modifier? Is it plus five? Strength mod. Or is it plus four? Uh, plus four. Plus four. You can hold this for four rounds and then you're going to have to start making checks where you're like holding this up. But you see strapped into a chair in the inside of this circular chamber, you see Quill. Oh, I'll messenger ring. Quill! Quill's, Quill's in here! Quick! Quick, I'm holding the door up! Quick! Can I... Yeah, uh, this guard's uh... about to turn around Nova as well. Uh, so as Lucius and Ayla can go, but you can see this guard oh. is about to turn around and see the doors held open by some invisible force. Uh, Ayla and Lucius, what'd you do? Yeah, flying in. Fast. Flying in and <laughs> ripping any restraints off. Yeah, sure. Quill? The two of you can easily just grab these restraints. Quill, some invisible thing grabs your arms and then suddenly the release, it, like your, your restraints grow and you're like... Bleh. <laughs> But the dimensional uh, shackles I'll just, are still on. I'll just like whisper really quietly. Can you not get teleported to, you know, astral space? It's really inconvenient. Wait a minute. Okay. While you do that, Ayla. Nova, this guard's going to turn around. What do you do? Uh, can I use my nage hand to knock, like just push, like hit the other side? So he's he has to look away uh, opposite the door. Like maybe He's even no just Metal like, Gear Solid yeah. guard. I'll roll just and see like, if he notices that like it's some sort of weird noise. He hears it, but he and he does momentarily flick back, but you don't think he's convinced. Like he's he's like something funny's going on. And he's like looking around. Okay. Well um, you, I mean, you hear Ayla. Nice trick, Ayla said. I'm not gonna answer your questions if you're gonna use their voices. And I'm seeing like okay. the door is screwed. I'm gonna like try the and run The door is open. It. No, well, you try and run towards it and your voice echoes. That's when the guard fully is like. Hey, oh, you there. Can I? What happened? Can I? And with that, Kim, we're gonna end today's episode. Yeah. And that is what? where we're ending this week. And we're gonna pick <laughs> oh, it up next week. Shit. Absolutely, that's where we're yeah. ending this week. Are you yeah. kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding yeah. me? Awesome. No, that's I a mean, good place. I know I just alerted them, but come on, like, <laughs> I have yeah, I no it. reason to believe they'd be here. Yeah, and yeah. they would be well, here. Yeah, yeah I think it would make the most yeah. sense that you would think that it's some sort of exactly. trick, right? Like Zakira or the Mind Flare or something like that. A hundred percent. I think that's great role playing. Yeah, um, well, I'm about to run face first into Sentry. <laughs> Bonk. Bonk. <laughs> That'll stop you. Yeah, that will stop him. Uh, uh, they put up a wall yeah. of force oh. here. <laughs> what? What an episode. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, my what God. an episode. An wow. Episode. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Last oh, time amazing. was amazing, and then this one's like even better. Jeez. So fun. <laughs> it just keeps escalating. So fun. Yeah. I've got no idea. Big stuff's how happening. Much of that is you planned. guys are doing like, cool stuff. You guys are doing cool stuff. Well, here's the thing. Like, it wasn't until today that I knew that Kim was going to try and contact Hesper. Until I, I didn't know that until, like, just before the game started. And then you guys came up with the plan of oh, going shit. to the, the cathedral and using the priestess instead of using contact on the plane. Um, hey, Hesper, that. your boy's uh, come. Help. So, <laughs> so that, so that when whole Kim thing with Hesper you. might not have happened. 
Like, yeah. if you guys well, hadn't tried yeah. that, like, it might not have happened. Crazy. So the moment Kim said to you, I'm going to contact Hesper, you were like, list of living and dead Aroas characters, you just shifted one over. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's going to have to happen. I, mean, I texted. I, no, I had this in my mind. I said to myself when I was planning it, I was like, if Hesper finds out what's happened, this is what he does. But he won't know yeah. until he's told. You know what? Getting captured yeah. so far has been the best thing because I had no way of communicating my vision with the eye, and now this Illithid has seen it. So, oh, it's only yes. Kira that knows. That is, That's fine. It's definitely yeah. a good thing. Definitely a good is. thing, Tom. I mean, if we can thing... capture the Illithid, well, they're, you said that they were a little bit mind controlled, right? Not this one, though. Maybe not this one. I mean. Yeah, no, we need to kill that boy. Um, He's got to go. Squid boy's got to go. The worst thing. He <laughs> starts civil go. war in Aroas. I'll start civil war in in the uh, Starkirian Empire. Sure. My campaign plans so might get a lot annoying. of... Uh, my, my plans for this these last five levels might get a serious shift, depending on how things go. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, it's so God. annoying how you like... We have to like the the illithid walks past us, but we don't know anything, so we yeah, just have to be like you we let him go is. past. Yeah. It's oh, perfect. Yeah. Let this guy yeah. go past. It's well, great. I love D and D, man. Like you guys did a great job of yeah. not metagaming that because you were just like, yeah, fucking let get him yeah. out of here. Yeah, great, brilliant. I, I could visualize uh, that so bye. well. Of yeah. that, yeah. that's a <laughs> like big deal, the two. and we're just letting it yeah. pass by. Yep, ignore yeah. it. Yeah. Just, just keep know. walking, buddy. Keep walking. Holy crap! Holy. Holy Cripoli. What an episode. Uh, Man. That was one of those times one. where it's like, you know what? Just keep going with these guys. I could watch this all day. You just carry yeah. on with them. Don't cut back to me. But I don't even care anymore. Epic. I just want to watch it. Epic. Also, here's the thing, though, is we now have an attunement to Sarkira's flagship. And uh, I don't know if well, as long as it remains in to... this place. So remember, yeah. he couldn't this get plane. you a point okay. inside the ship. So it's, it's, it's this place in the Astral Sea. It's kind of just but lucky that Nova... she hasn't moved her ship. But. If she did it in the ship, maybe, maybe. So there's a reason Hesper couldn't put it in here to begin with. Yeah. Otherwise, okay. he would have just put you next to Quill, right? So there are yeah. limitations. There are limitations. Okay. Okay. There's okay. Uh, the only okay. one downside of this episode is I feel really bad for Studio Mir when they eventually have to animate this. As a <laughs> <laughs> this is like all the budget, like the, the a couple of, of episodes Korra before animators. this. That's oh, like, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Legend of Korra animators. Oh, uh, my they God. do a ton of stuff as well. Just those oh. thousands of Hespers, like yeah. Oh, just, oh, oh that's yeah, the dream. That amazing. Yeah, tell me, <laughs> oh. tell me about it. Oh, I need. Trust that me, it, it is it is the the dream inside this brain that we got a cool studio mirror opening to Erois and like a full fucking you know animated series but it will never happen but man um, with someone watching has to know somebody someone's got that to can know. Just <laughs> throw us a bone here come on <laughs> let's make this happen come on. it's too epic know, not to um, who's the guys that uh, who's who the crit role working with I know that they've got a big studio as well that they're working with for their animated show that's Would right um, as well. they're busy they're busy oh, they're too busy you can in get <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, Ardman. Ardman. yeah, yeah. Ardman. That would be yeah. Sick. Yeah. yeah, play Hesper's just like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 That that someone must so know how to play Hesper. Oh, oh, that'd be so oh, that'd good. Be so good. <laughs> so, Rhiannon's gone. You're you know, you're lost Ardman her Rowest. mind. Claymation of Rose, yeah. hell yeah! Wow. <laughs> I'll, we'll settle for some some nice drawings of how that scene looked. Oh man. Yep. Fail, please, hint, hint. please. I'll, Fail. I'll give you money. I'll give you. I'll, <laughs> no I'll commission you for it. And all no others. pressure. pressure, but I'll pay you. No pressure. And all um, others, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, and all God. others. Yeah, and and any artist. Yes. You want? Uh, you want some donations? Let's read yes. some messages. Yes. Let's please. read some messages. Cool. We had a uh, quarter hundo from Dirk Burke. Uh, who says, been in the VOD squad since the very first episode of Lightfall, and this is literally the first episode live I can watch. Welcome. Oh, Scheduling well, issues. Good one to watch. You know, wow. That was yeah, a good one good to jump one. in Pretty on. big one. Uh, love you Pretty all one. and the beautiful stories you tell. Thank you very much, Dirk Burke. Uh, Jenny Claire, thank you for uh, your donation. <laughs> Fail says my sketchbook is already on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Pizza9798 has donated with, hello, I started a new campaign on Friday. 
We spent an hour in a tavern named the Salted Bean, and there was Classic. an appalling lack <laughs> of beans. What a great name! <laughs> My harpy bard was not happy with the false advertising. No, turn the place <laughs> to the ground. Um, <laughs> that Norwegian guy with a quarter hundo, week two out of six of telling the high rollers well-deserved compliments. Kim, watching you interact with NPCs has uh, often resulted in me putting similar NPC NPCs in my campaign in hope for the same amazing interaction. Your level of immersion is a joy to watch. Oh, there you thank go, Kim. you. That's really kind. It's very true. Thank you. Very true. Uh, and that is week <laughs> two out of six of telling us what we deserve. Uh, Valcorn five with a quarter hundo. Uh, have always thank loved you. the stream. Um, before I carry on with this one, actually, it's almost eight o'clock. Parsec powers are on after us. Ah, yes. Yes. Let's end it on Yogs. We, so if you are on Yogs cast and you want to listen to us doing the donation messages and keep chatting a little bit about High Rollers and stuff like that, come on over to High Rollers D&D. &D. We're going to keep reading out messages and chatting about the game there. If you want to stick around and support Parsec Pals, Boba and Ped, please do. Big love to Bobs. Um, do that. But yeah, we're going to jump over to just High Rollers D&D &D now. So uh, we're going to do that now. Bye, everybody. See ya. Uh, bye. Bye, Yogs. Bye. bye, everybody. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye everyone. <clears throat> uh, cool. All right, and continue with Valcorn. Sorry about that. Uh, Quarter Hundo, have always loved the stream. Thank you for the hours of entertainment. Did I hear Smeek is coming back to help Quill? Nope. Yeah. Uh, Captain Blackbeak. <laughs> yeah. He saves Hesper. the day. <laughs> Captain Blackbeak has said uh, with a uh, Tim Tom Bombadil, Tom Tom Bombadilio. Uh, he's just read this out, and now it looks rather silly. -o. Wellity, wellity, Tom B. Maguire. Hope you have, uh, hope you and the Stormy Boys get on well today. We're sticking it to Papa Starbane. Uh, can't <laughs> stay because I'm putting baby to bed. Good luck. Wow. Thank you. Starbane's rhythm in completely that one. unaware. Tom Bombadil. Tom Tom Bombadil. Oh, yeah. I like that. Oh, yeah. I like it. Um, <laughs> Ghost in progress. My we <laughs> Um, as a baby DM, I hope I can give my players half the chills I got during this whole scene. Hopefully. Let's get <laughs> an ice cube. Oh boy. Get an ice cube and just throw it out. <laughs> Graying Badger with a half hundo and no message. Thank you very much. Wait, have you just loaded up the Tom? Very much. You like, like the big, big boy. boy. <laughs> okay, great. Hi, <laughs> Barons W. Uh, oh, yeah. $59.93. Thank you very much. What a breathtaking moment. Thank you very much. Uh, let me do a big refresh. Big, big refresh. Uh, and find where I was. Find where I was. Find where I was. Um, oh, man, bro. Uh, thank you for donating. Darrow has donated. Uh, always enjoy being made to cry on a Sunday morning. Love you all. Sorry, Darren. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thirty-nine Join salty Mark. cookies. Join me, friend. Um, in memoriam of Nightjar, who is consigned to the Vod Squad this week. Oh. <laughs> Nightjar. Oh. But also, got a big one to catch also, up can I just say a big thank you to all the mods uh, who have been running this without Nightjar? I know you were nervous to do it without your Lord and Savior and oh, Master of Nightjar, um, but you've that done an amazing great. job today, guys. So, you've done, yeah, you've done one you've done great. cookies, Danny Ken. Great job, everybody. Great job, mod. I got their yeah. messages in. I've yeah. got their messages in staff yeah. room as well, so I've got those ready. Big claps, yeah. big claps awesome. to our mod team. Yeah, it was and only Kristen from well. that message. We would have cut deep into past. I was Kristen in there as well. Get a message. Um, Socialism for the win. Uh, I am done with stupid, sexy Starbane. Now I only simp for smart, sexy, gilfy Hesper and sexy evil Zarkira <laughs> and Talia and Barris and pretty much every NPC Mark has ever made. <laughs> gilfy Hesper is now top of the list. <laughs> what about the Illithid? No? Illithid, anyone? No. Uh, it'll get right into your brain. <laughs> Uh, Sanaki has donated again with God damn, Mark, I should have waited so that I could say the laughs, joy, spine chills, and the tears. Way to make my throat parched, Mark, and being awesome. Uh, way to make my throat parched, Mark, and being awesome. Also, I hope that you guys <laughs> say well. Don't take too long. A joy. I have a not strong grip on Britain. English? Crosshairs <laughs> with... <laughs> Goodly English. Jesus Martin. Christ. Britain. Crosshairs has donated with High Rollers. Another uh, weekly update. I can't remember what episode was on last week, but now I'm on 98. 
So yeah. I guess I'll finally we'll be able to watch you guys live yeah. next week. Hopefully. Oh my god, that's uh, a lot. <laughs> clear skies. Thanks for boosting you. those YouTube numbers. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Also, Re, I've realized recap five, I'm like, awesome, you're getting through it. And then I looked at how many chapters there were. <laughs> yeah. All right, wait, so chapter five. What chapter is this one? Yeah. 16. <laughs> so you got 11 to go. 11 to go. Yeah, you could just uh, <laughs> come on, just hurry up with that. There's some people waiting, you know. <laughs> yeah, just spin that flywheel and just get them going. Grr, crank the flywheel. Crank that flywheel. Jim has donated with Hi, gang. I had to donate this episode because, god damn it, after 109 episodes and not missing a single Sunday for three years, wow. you got me to cry. Well done. I'd like to suggest Damn. the episode title of Hesper's Last Lesson. Love you all. Stay safe. Hesper's Last Lesson. Ooh. Pretty good. Oh, pretty I don't good. want to give. Too, I don't I like want to do spoilers. Spoilery. But yeah, yeah, we were thinking yeah, like bird, bird in a cage because I don't want to do Despite spoilers. All my rage. So. I'm still just a bird in a cage. Sir bird Dolphus. Yeah. You were very ragey with... today as well. Oi! Prepare thine filthy nose holes. But tis I, the Bud Light yeah. Bandit. The bud be extra frothy today, <laughs> made so by Mark's stupendous verbal opulence. Okay. Them tears of pride, sir. So good. Better than a brick of bus cheese. Better than the bud itself. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought for a second, I was like, oh, is this like a Budweiser marketing account that's like gone in and donated in our stream to like raise awareness I mean, of bud, Budweiser? It, it. But it wasn't. <laughs> I was no. just like, oh, for God's sakes. Um, but um, no, thank you very much, yeah. Bud, bud yeah. Rogue or whoever you are. <laughs> uh, Sir Does he mean like Bud was. like... Marijuana, because that sounded like no. Someone they, said that. they said Bud Light. They said Bud Light. Oh, Light, they said Bud Light. Light. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's slimming weed. I don't know. Ghost in progress has donated <laughs> with when when mind flayers start talking, Mark's eyebrows start dancing. Do they? they probably do. Like, oh, I'm gonna get in your mind. <laughs> don't make me unsee things. Uh, I can only raise tickler. one eyebrow. I can't rock it. <laughs> You can't rock? Can't rock? Uh, <laughs> hamster tickler. Can't just hide Thank the other you. eyebrow. <laughs> no, I can. That's what I just did. Uh, hamster no, tickler, thank you for showing once more that magic is real. It's the images your powerful words wow. let us all see. The scene with Hesper was astonishing. Oh, it was awesome. That's a good um, word yeah. for it. Yeah. Ace Tagalis has donated $34.58. I don't know what that translates to, but... First time catching live, started watching Aroas back in January and finally caught up. And what an episode to catch live. Hunger of Zarkira coming soon to the galaxy near you. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the downside. Ooh, yeah. God. I'm looking yeah. at the upsides, and the upside is Darbane ain't got no Zarkira no more. Varys has donated with no message. Thank you very much. Fail has donated with, I wasn't necessarily expecting to cry over Hesper dying today, but here we are, I guess. Uh, that was definitely an episode. It was so good. Half a prison break complete, other half to go. Also, civil war in the Valkyrian Empire. We love to see it. You love to see it. Um, <laughs> I don't really know all dreams. this optimism. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of optimism here that I, I'm not on board with for sure. I'm like, oh, I think maybe you guys are misreading what would happen. <laughs> Perhaps there's, um, you know, like, no, but she'll turn against Callus. I'm like... No. Or just no. feed Hadar more. Just, or hey, just look, be like, oh, oh, yeah. I'll just yeah, join right? with the guy who's going to win. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Papa Starbs ain't got no Zarkira no more. That seems like a win <laughs> to me. No more, no I mean, more. sure. In a, in a way, sure. And what's our goal, really? Was it ever to kill Zarkira? No, it was to stop Starbane. And we're yeah. doing that. Get what? Valor back. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, Rooney Dreams has donated. Uh, with, well, this was an episode. Here are five euros for the animated series. All right, put it towards the fund. Thank uh, you. We'll Darth start uh, has donated as well with no message. Thank you very much. And uh, Arbor2364, $15 redos. Hi, all. I can't normally catch these live, but I'm cla uh, glad I could today. What an amazing episode. When I Thank first you. looked into D and D, uh, I looked around for some shows to watch and found this via Kim's channel. Best Ooh. decision I made ah. to watch something as I now play too. Nice. 
Boom. Oh. There you go. Thank you very much. Bam. Oh, 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 oh. Key. Huh? Uh, Key's Key disconnected. Her electricity He's gone, yeah. I did wonder. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I, no, the electricity is blown twice flat, as well. So. <laughs> oh. I think Bristol might be bored. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that Quickly then. Is, that, is, that is every donation in there. Mark, if you Woo. want to do the Discord, I've got to open yep, as I've well. I've got the staff room. Uh, thank you, Visity, for sorting this out. So on HR, we had a bunch of gift subs. Uh, D Miller, 50 gift subs. Thank you very much. Gunkus, thank you. Gribbles, thank you. Uh, Ace, Artemis Ace, Dankius Prime, Max the Menace, Fionor 2, KD Man DS, thank you very much. We just had bits from Trumpole, Daft Day 41, Shaking Banana. And then we had a uh, message over on Yogs, which was Ola Renve, no message, and Ace of Thorns just said, hashtag Freebird, and then hugs. Uh, and that's it. That's it from everybody. Uh, we need to go before... Trot's PC blows up before any more of us <laughs> yeah. lose power. Oh, We're going to head off. But thank you so much for an epic adventure today. This was a really epic session. Big thank you to yeah. NordVPN and D&D &D Beyond, you. both of our amazing sponsors. Please do check out the links in chat or in the video description. It's saving my life, Tom. Yeah, That's and right. well done, Tom. Okay. I sure hope evil AI Trot doesn't come back with a nefarious plan uh, to get revenge. Uh, until then, else's until next week... <laughs> We gotta finish getting this bird out of prison. He's still got yeah. those shackles on. There's still a whole ship full of baddies. And Zakira, Mummy Zakira is still around somewhere. So fingers crossed she that the party can get out. Mummy Zakira. Bye. Mm. Bye everybody. See ya. Bye bye. Later. bye, bye. See ya.